Come on up on this monster Sunday roast. The Showtime Swans are back, Dust. Oh, Jeff, what a performance they were, Jeff. We have Finn Callahan from the GWS Giants join us this week on the pod reviewing the Giants and Brisbane game. And then we speak to rookie from the West Coast Eagles, Harvey Johnson, a mate of ours, talked about playing with Jeremy McGovern and what a win that was against North on Saturday Arvo. Yeah, unbelievable win, Jeff. We also bury the Blues, the Blues, but we also bury the Bombers as well, Jeff. Do not forget we bury the Bombers as and well. And we give all the best odds from the whole weekend, talking about every team, every game. What a weekend of footy. The ladder is amazing right now, Das. It's it's cool. So we go through the ladder at the end. Some The dogs can still miss the finals, Jeff, somehow. It's, so It's just unbelievable. We touch on that. What a round. Enjoy the roast. You might want to listen to this in about four or five parts. but It's long, but it's good. There's no better show than the roast. Enjoy. Welcome back to the Sunday Roast, the show that we overact to the, all the weekend's footy, celebrate the winners, roast the losers. Das, it's a special episode. I'll introduce you. How are you, brother? I'm good, Jeb. So usually we start on Friday night or Thursday night, but we do have a special guest, so we have to skip straight to the Giants and Brisbane. We do have our very own, the local produce, Finn Callahan. Thank you for joining us. So we call him the local produce because he did play from our junior club, Morty Bray. Shout out to Morty Bray. There's a few Morty Bray boys running around there, Jeb. We've got Tim Taranto, Blake Howes. Uh, we've got Harvey Johnson as well. Unfortunately, from our year level, Jacko Boland didn't make it because he had glandular <laughs> fever and he's under 18 years, so he didn't make it. But Finn, thanks for joining us, mate. No worries, boys. Thanks for thanks for having me on. It's good to be here. So, so let's go, go to, to yesterday's game. game. GWS Lions up at the Gabba. You're down by five goals, 30 mm. points at quarter time. And then Adam Kingsley gave an all-time spray. What, what happened there? Yeah, well, it wasn't ideal. First quarter, like, we uh, just couldn't get hands on it. We were at minus 25 contest possession around the contest, <laughs> which never <laughs> happens. Like, it's a, yeah, that's just ridiculous stats. So, King has brought us in. He's pretty much the, the message came out straight to King's voice. No no line readings for us. So, all we know, oh, fuck, like, I know what's going to happen here. He's going to give it to us. And then just brought us in. And it's like, boys, like, that's not going to cut it, obviously. And then he said, like, just sort of questioned our ability to, to win the contested footy um, and sort of said, like, Forget finals, boys. If we can't, if we play like this, we're not, we're not going to read anyone. So we had to fix our mojo pretty quickly. But after that, the boys, um, yeah, the boys got back on track and were able to finish off the game pretty pretty strongly, which was good. Well, it was good. Even like when we asked you early in the week if you wanted to come on, and it was like perfect. We're like, fuck. The best thing that could happen is the Giants get a good win. You play well and hopefully kick a snag, which you did early. Um, they were saying on the call that they haven't kicked many goals this year. Have you been trying to get forward a little bit more? And pretty much as soon as you guys kicked that goal, you guys just started to flip the script. And you guys seem to do it all the time. Like there is that massive momentum. Do you guys feel that in a game? And do you guys definitely talk about it on the field? Like, all right, boys, we're fucking coming now. Let's go. Yeah, a hundred percent. Well, yeah, we've we've been starting the game obviously really slowly. Yeah, first quarter is probably the last six weeks, but I feel like once we get going in the second quarter, like once we get our, our game up and going, our momentum like teams can't go with us. So it's definitely something that we feel out on the ground. Um, yeah, we just started winning the ball around the stoppages and obviously get it down to, to big hogs and the forts, and you know, they're in crew best form, so they're finishing their work well. But yeah, definitely we're starting to build our momentum in the sec- like start of the second quarter and. And carry that through the game. I was I was lucky yesterday. I kicked keep my goal. I haven't yeah. like, honestly was off. I've, I've missed that many this year. I think I'm about like two goals, fifteen. A lot of them don't register, so I've kicked them on the full. So uh, nice yesterday for it to finally go through. I've had a lot of shots this year, but yeah, as I said, I've just been missing them. But yeah, my role is sort of like it, sort of been playing a bit of like transition defensive midfielder. So I haven't got forward as much as sort of I can, but sort of just got to play my role for the team in that sense. But yeah, certainly when when we get our our game up and going and our ball movement and pressure, um, yeah, we're really hard to stop. And I think that showed yesterday in the, in the last three quarters. When you had uh, – when Kieran Briggs was announced that he wasn't playing because he was a bit sore, did you guys know you had to, like, shark off Oscar McInerney the whole day or sort of, you know, play on Lockie Neal and try and win the ball from there? Because he's in great form, Oscar McInerney, but I reckon you guys nearly just cost him an All-Australian jacket. There is no way he should have – like they should have not won that game with him versus a no-name ruckman, even though he played all right. But you guys just you you scored from center clearances. You did everything right. Yeah, well, Keefe, he's a big, he's a big boy. Keefe's a massive unit, so we knew um we knew he'd be he'd be up to the challenge. And obviously, losing Briggs is not ideal. But Keefe did pretty well yesterday in the ruck, I thought. But we um we we sent Bedford to Neil, so we tagged Neil, and I thought he did a great job. Sort of like he only had I think it was four clearances for the game. So yeah. Um, yeah, Tobes did it. Did a great job, sort of nullifying his impact. Um, but yeah, big guy. He's 
his star. Like he's he's such a big bloke. Like he's he's um he definitely he's be top dude. five ruckman. He's a he's a massive he's a massive man. So um yeah, Keefe did a great job yesterday. And yeah, I think after the, after the first quarter, like we scored, I think it was nine goals from stoppage yesterday. So yeah, it's unbelievable. Is, yeah, massive, and especially from centre bounce. So um yeah, that was um that was a long way for us to win the game. It's amazing how much like obviously you had Kelly back in the side, and when you guys get Cogs as well. Like at the start of the year when you guys were running on like on the what did you win like your first five games you guys look like you yeah. were just like that was your team you were humming obviously you had Kelly back when you get cogs but now when you've got a few of the small guys like how important is it to have a bit of speed in your side like with Darcy Jones like as soon as he started to get going he just looks like if like you create a play he's just faster and twitchier than everyone and when he started to get the ball moving everyone just went with him and it was just like you couldn't stop it. Yeah, Darcy's he's electric. Like he over twenty meters, I reckon he'd be the quickest player in the AFL. Like he's he's so fast. People forget he's only nineteen. He's ACL last year, so it's he's only played like ten games of senior footy. So so just like yeah, what he's doing now is unbelievable. He's a he's a great fellow as well, which makes it um, even better. He's a great teammate to have. But um, I think like he's just he's part of our like small our small forward group, like the Mosquito Fleet we call them. But they're just unbelievable. They're all so quick, like. Um, Daniels is, is fast as Harvey Thomas is you know eighteen year old kid that uh, for a first so year he's fast. played every yeah. game here like he's been unbelievable. Um, Callum Brown who's not playing at the moment but when he's in there he's he's fast as so we've just got yeah lots of pace. Um, in the front half and speed to burn it we really I think in finals on the big grounds like the G that really um it's really valuable so we're lucky to have them and then yeah around the ball like getting getting um Kelly back yesterday he's such a classy player like makes a massive difference and. Yeah, people forget like we've had. He's been out for a large portion, like like so large portion back half of the year. So um, when he's playing, like it makes a huge difference. And same as Cogs and Isaac come in when they both come back from injury. Like we're going to get all the troops back, and uh, yeah, certainly it'd be hard to beat come September. I reckon. Yesterday after the game, was everyone getting around Aaron Cadman? It felt like he's coming out game. Like he he was just huge in that fourth quarter. He stole one of Toby Green's goals, which I want to know if that was spoken about in the rooms after. He took the advantage. He nearly hit the post, but he had a big game. He looked he looked great running and jumping at the footy. Looked like he had a heap of confidence playing. Was all the boys getting around him after the game? Yeah, hundred percent. I didn't actually see that one with Toby, so I'm not sure what happened there. But yeah, Cads he's like he's my housemate, so I'm I'm really close to him. He's one of my best mates, and um. Yeah, he was he was unbelievable yesterday. It's great that sort of like started to finally click for him. He was launching the ball. King has gave him a big pump up um, in the team meeting after the game, sort of saying like, because he's been playing his role pretty well every week, but oh, I think this week the rewards sort of like finally started to come for him. So um, yeah, he's a, he's a gun player. He's going to be he's going to be you know gun for many years to come. But it's great to see him finally you know get his reward yesterday and some hard work paying off. Can you sort of compare this run at the moment to how you guys went last year? Obviously, it was you lost the prelim by a point. How tough that must have been. You've started really well. You're a bit flat throughout the middle period, but like you've gone on to beat the Blues when you were down by eight goals. Obviously, you beat the Tigers, got over the top of the Suns, a big win against the Dees, just came back over the Hawks, and then obviously taking a massive scalp at the Gabba. It is really about getting right at the right time of year, isn't it? And how, how does this compare to last year, you feel? Like last year you went on unbelievable run the back end of the year. I think you've like 13th or 14th with a few rounds to go. You've sort of not as deep, but how does that feel going on the same sort of run? Yeah, well, King's whole motto is like build for September. So everything since he first got to the club two years ago, that's all he talks about. Like during the preseason, it's all just about building building form and during the early parts of the year you know, to be playing our best footy come final. So um, I think, yeah, we set up a whole program to be able to do that. I, I think if we're comparing to last year, last year I feel like we will like everything was just going right. We had no injuries. We were we were smashing teams this time of the year and just like flying on sort of all cylinders. Whereas this year, I feel like we've had a bit more adversity. We sort of had to like it hasn't all been smooth sailing. We've been behind in a lot of games and, and sort of had to come back and really fight for the wins. Whereas yeah, last year we were beating teams pretty convincingly. So in that aspect, it's been a little bit different. But I suppose the momentum that was sort of created both times, like this year and last year, is similar in in the way that yeah we've won like six games right now, and that was the same last yeah. year. Yeah, the, the form coming into finals is different, but just the way we've been winning, I suppose, is a little bit different compared to last year. I've sort of had to grind it out a lot more. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, saying that as well, like comparing to last year, Toby Green was just the best player in the comp last year. All Australian captain. You guys internally would have just been like, this is fucked. Same thing. I reckon this year he's building for September. I reckon the last four or five weeks, he's just going up, 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 and he looks like he's hitting his absolute peak right now. Can you feel that out in the field that he's just – like 
ready to explode sort of thing. With with Tobes earlier in the year, he, he had his first um he had his first little, little girl Isla, so she was born. I, I like that would have been like obviously that would have been hard at home. Like he's got lots on his plate there, trying to trying to help his partner, um, trying to help his partner out at home. So that probably wasn't ideal for him in the early part of the year. He's down on form a little bit, but now um yeah he's he's. He's humming. Like, he's such a good person to have out in the field. His leadership's unbelievable. And it's just like, there's a bit of awe about it. Like, when Tubbs playing well, everyone knows. Like, oh, he's yeah. Just, he's it just stands like, out on camera, everything. And then Jesse Hogan as well. His hands are that sticky at the moment. He is dropping nothing. Are you guys just kicking it anywhere near him and it's just clunk at the moment? Yeah. Well, yeah. Hogan's best contest mark in the game. Like, he's a. Oh, yeah. He's a freak. Like, and, he, and look, to be honest, he doesn't miss his set shots. Like, a touch wood. Like, he's. I, Last 25 shots, he's kicked like 27 goals. Like, it's yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> Which is, there's nothing better as midfielder if you if your big key forward's going back and, and Just knocking kicking it. Yeah, it's a great oh. feeling. So, him and Toby together, like, when they're up and about, like, yeah, it was super hard to stop. But I think the out of balance this year has been everyone around them. Like, even Toby yesterday didn't have his best game, but we've got enough good players now in the forward line, um, you know, to keep, to keep the goals for him. So, yeah, let's hope we can continue it in the next few weeks. But when those two are up and about, it's, it's great. It's great to watch and, and be a part of. As much as you can, can you sort of run us through like after a win like that? So you've taken a big scalp up at the Gabba. What does the end of the end of the game sort of look like when you come home? Like, so you've had a massive road win. Like, is it uh, like everyone's like up and about after the rooms? Like, is it a quick turnaround to get home? Like, what does the sort of big win this sort of year, this time of the year look like for you boys? We played in Brizzy, so a few of the families, like my family, um, showed up for the game, which was great. But nice. They're, not, not as many families were there yesterday because Brizzy's a fair way away. But, yeah, usually straight into the rooms afterwards. The boys are all pretty up and about. Like, it's a big win, so everyone's sort of carrying on um, in the rooms after the game. But, yeah, lots of the, the sponsors and stuff were there after the game. So the rooms was just absolutely buzzing afterwards. It's it's the best feeling. Like, the half an hour after the game, it's just unreal. But then from there, sort of jump in the ice bath. Um, and then, yeah, straight to the sort of the airport. The boys... We travelled back about two and a half hours after the game, and then um, we all we got back to Sydney at about about nine o'clock last night. And then um, we all we all just went out for a quiet beer. Had, had the twenty first last night, so um, everyone's out having, having a bit of fun. But um, yeah, no, it was good night. It's good to sort of we we try and make an effort. Like everyone's a lot a lot of the boys um, moved away from home up here, so we're sort of sort of we all live together. We're always out, so we're like we're like family. We're always with each other, so. Everyone's super, super tight, which I feel like is one of the biggest advantages of, of being up here in Sydney. So we all went out together, had a beer, and um, just, yeah, just love being with each other all the time. So um, just celebrated well, which was, which was good fun last night. So good. And then what's the plan today? So you're up early doing this. We've probably woken you up with a bit of a hangover, but do you have to recover today? Or is it a day off today, or what's the plan? Yeah, I'll, I'll head down to the beach. It's actually the um, city of surf run up here in Sydney today. So it's, it's uh, absolutely Heaps going on around the beach. There's hundreds of thousands of people out in the street. So Jesus. pretty um, pretty hectic day up here. But yeah, I'll head down, uh, jump in the water with a few of the boys, recover, and then sort of rest up. It's a, it's a nice day up here. The weather's the weather's unreal. So just enjoy, make the most of the day off, and then back into it, back into the swing of things tomorrow. So yeah, it's a good time to to be up here at the moment. Unreal. I just want to know who stitched you up with your car parking, and did they did the club make you go get some lessons? Because that you had about three or four posts in a row, I think, on the Giants page. Are you actually a bad driver, or who actually stitched you up on that one? Well, there's you know, like a, a bit of a story on that. I was actually the first one to park in that car park, so it's actually the car next to me. <laughs> next year, I can park in, but no, that's our um, that's our media media man Jacob Gain. I'm, I'm sure you. You'd, you know, you know him. I'll be across him, but he's pretty funny. Like he's he's unbelievable with with the with the memes and the, and the stuff that he does for the club. It's actually been so good building the club sort of brand on Instagram and that stuff outside. Like it's a hard market up here in Western Sydney to crack into. But he's um he's super funny with the stuff he posts. But yeah, with the parking, I've got a little bit of work to do. I'm, I'm actually I'm a bit of a shocking parker, but we'll come. Up, yeah, I've, I've improved that a little bit. <laughs> um, f- f- I, I know you can't really think about footy trip just yet. You, you know, you've got you've got a big finals ahead. Hopefully, yeah, I'm looking at the ladder now. You guys are near, you guys are hunting top of the ladder nearly. I'm sure you talk about the home final finishing second. But is there a little? Is there talks of a footy trip yet, or you're just too worried about September? A footy trip? Well, it's it's interesting. The boys, a few of the boys, are thinking about going to Hong Kong. Like Bali's the obvious one. We actually, in my three years that I've been here, we haven't gone on a footy trip yet. Yeah. So the boys. Sort of thing in Hong Kong this year. Toby, Toby's a pretty big fan there. I think 
the races over there must be pretty good or something. I'm not too familiar with it all. <laughs> yeah, Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong was the sort of on everyone's minds. I think um, we'll see what happens if we win. Maybe we might go to go to the states or something. Maybe LA for oh, a few oh. days. But so no good. Nah. Wrong, I think would be would be the plan at the minute. So you, you've got you've only got two more games to go, which is actually crazy that we're coming into the back end of the year. So you got Frio and the Bulldogs the next two weeks. So you guys have got two really good games. If you win them, as you, as Jeff said before, you've almost finished like top two. You get that home spot, and then you get a really good launch out of it. Yeah, well we've um we've got the yeah Frio and the Doggies next two weeks. So obviously big challenge. They're going pretty well. Um, yeah, if we can if we can win those two, I think a home final. If we if we play a qualifying final in you know, a massive chance to win that. And then home presenting would be unreal. But, um, yeah, look, to be honest, like, if we lose the next two, we can still finish seventh or eighth. So it's um it's crazy. It's such yeah, a tight it's season. unbelievable. We can't get too far ahead of ourselves. Like, it's just who knows what's going to happen. Like, I think I think Toby was doing the um, he was on the um, ladder predictor and he's um, on the plane yesterday before he left off. And, like, if we beat Freo next week but lose to the Dogs, we can still finish seventh, which, like, yeah, the week off before finals, that'd be great. I'm sure we'll get everyone back and then just, yeah, we'll give it a good shot in, in, in September. But, yeah, as I said before, who knows what happens. If we play our best, I'm sure we can go all the way, but it's just it's going to be really tight. So it's really up in the air. Can you even talk about percentage? Because right now you're on the same points as Freo and Geelong, but uh, – sorry, Port Adelaide and Geelong. Port have a better percentage of you, Geelong don't. So two get second, you nearly have to get gain the percentage. Can you even talk about that or you just got to worry about winning the game? Oh, I think if – like Freo and Doggy said – like the unfortunately the, the teams that like probably when we play them it's probably gonna be pretty close wins so it's not like we're gonna be yeah, yep. smack them by 10 goals like we might I hope we do but like if we're being realistic it's percentage we're probably not gonna get the biggest boost but I feel like if we win both those games we'll probably finish second or third so yep. that'd be fine if we, if we have to play away first final that doesn't really matter we, we're pretty good at playing away so we'll just yep. play play anyone anywhere and just I love that it. I love yeah. that so much Pretty much last one. Like, how much footy do you watch? Because obviously, there's a there's a lot of guys. I think they just come in like that's their job. They train, they focus on what they have to, and then they just sort of have their life outside. Like, how much footy do you actually watch and consume? Like, are you guys watching like last night's games? Being like, oh my god, the ladder's moving again. Yeah, no, we're we're all watching the games. Like last night after yeah. the games, like we're pretty invested. See, so especially we're, we're cheering for the teams that are going to help us on the ladder. So we're all all watching it pretty closely. I'd like to be fair. I do miss like. I miss watching local footy. Like, I would love to be back watching Parky on the weekends. Like, that stuff I, I love. Like, I don't watch too much footy before uh, before my game. So, if I play, like, a Saturday night, I won't watch too much leading up to the game. I sort of just try and do my own thing. I, don't, I feel like it's sort of... I don't want to get too invested in, in what players or teams are doing before the game. But it's sort of afterwards, I'll... Um, yeah, I, I like to watch and see what's going on. But, yeah, I'm always keeping up to date with sort of who's playing well and uh, what teams are sort of flying, especially if we're playing the team next week, I'll try to watch their game. The local footy, I, I really do miss watching that. Like, it's you, you do miss it because up here there's no one playing on Saturday. Like, it's just footy's not big up here, so. You should have seen. So, me and Jeff <laughs> thought we'd go down at Christmas morning and just try and do the 100 hundreds, and we were just loping through. Then we see you on the other side of the oval look like an absolute Adonis. Me and Jeff, <laughs> Jeff packed it up pretty quickly after that and left. <laughs> When um, GG guys put us to shame. <laughs> was that, was that been, I reckon that might have been two years ago. We would have had a huge group down. Like, oh, would have been myself. I reckon Blake Howes used to he used to play mm. Morty and um, Parky Boy as well. There would have been yeah, I reckon about eight of us. It just down at the hundred hundreds. That's it's sort of a thing now. Christmas Day is, and everyone sort of does it. And, it's actually um, it's yeah. pretty fun. It's not too hard. Like you just have a chat with your mates, a bit of working. Me and Dars might have a kick with uh, who was there. So it was you, Blake Casting, Marcus Winhag was there, Harvey Johnson, a couple of guys that yeah. might get drafted this year. Dars, we might have to join in on that session. Yeah, oh. <laughs> we yeah, might sliced. end a couple of blokes' season with a few finger breakers. We kick them. <laughs> like, be careful. Open hand spin when you catch one of Dars's left footers. Yeah, I'm actually keen for the Hong Kong races. Yeah. I've like, <laughs> me and Jeff will come in with some late mail in the quaddy. So. Yeah. If there's if there's if there's a spare spot for us, we'll definitely be joining. You'd be uh, you'd be welcome inclusion, that's for sure. <laughs> so you got so Freo seven days from now. You play Freo one forty five at NG Stadium. What does your week look like this week? Obviously, yeah, you said you got today off after a bit of recovery, and then what Monday onwards? Ah, uh, so yeah, Monday first day back at the club. Just got review, um, sort of a light skill session, like flush run, and then have like um. Yeah, weights and then sort of line meetings. Just pretty much go through the weekend's game, how it looks, sort of what we can improve on, what we sort of did well. But it's a pretty, it's a pretty light day. Just sort of lots of recovery, massage, that kind of thing. And then Tuesday, um, sort of our first like proper training session for the week. So 
like, to be honest, it's pretty similar to Parkdale. Like, we, we'll train Tuesday, Thursday, and then sort of play Saturday. So it's the same thing. So, yeah, it's like Tuesday, yeah, train, weights, sort of that's a full day at the club. Uh, we have Wednesday off. Thursday is our biggest day of the week. So yeah, in there pretty early, um, yeah, main training. So it's like six, seven K session. Um, pretty, pretty solid. Like we got, we're going pretty hard there. And then we have our, our line reading sort of preview for the weekend, sort of scout for you, what they do well, where we can sort of get on top of them and beat them. Um, and then Friday is our captain's run. So just because we're not traveling this week, it'll just be at, um, just a giant stadium, sort of just light kick, like skill session. Um, and then yeah, game day Sunday. So it's, um, it's pretty good. We haven't we haven't played at home, but we've been travelling last three weeks, so it's good to finally have a home game. And yeah, I love playing at Sydney. So I swear, no one plays less home games than you, blokes. You just never mm. play at NG Stadium. We travel fourteen or fourteen or fifteen out of the the twenty three weeks of the season because we play at Canberra. Like we play home games in Canberra, but you still got to travel, travel either three hours on the bus or an hour on the plane, or oh, forty five minutes on the plane. So yeah, like. A, we, we do like playing a camera, but it's certainly like at this time of year, you can take it out of here. You get pretty knackered traveling every week. So it's good to be back in Sydney, um, sleeping in our own bed for the night. When you hear well, like Collingwood play 17 games at the MCG nearly in a row, do you guys just shake your head nearly? Like you are yeah, traveling every every week, basically. I, even like SM the minute, like I play seven games in a row at Marvel Stadium. Like it's like that's a huge advantage. We're travel. We're still traveling. You know, two out of every yep. three three weeks. So it's not going to change. Unfortunately, that's just the way it is. But yeah, it would be nice rocking up and playing the G seventeen games out of the year and oh. you know, <laughs> being your home ground. It's a massive advantage. But yeah, unfortunately, they felt that uh, they won't change. That's just the way it is. We just got to deal with it. Or well, we we don't mind traveling. We, we'll beat anyone anywhere. Yeah, oh, I love that. Hey, thing, mate, thanks for joining. We won't want to take too much of your time. Unlike the footy show, we can't give you the Aquilas, the Platform 28, and the golf clubs, but we will send you a 100K hoodie, mate. So that's about all that we can give you. Unreal. So we'll, we'll send one down to you. Hey, mate, we really appreciate you spending a bit of time with us this morning. It's a definite massive insight for us and anyone that listens to the show. So I really appreciate it, mate. I know, guys, boys. Thank you very much. And yeah, look thanks, forward to mate. seeing you back in Parky. All right, Dave, we just got 25 minutes from Finn Callan, the local produce. How good was that? Mate, he's unbelievable. And we got to have a nice little chat off the camera as well. Um, no, he's a ripper bloke. It's just crazy that that's his job as a full-time footballer. And especially living up in Sydney, Jeff, it sounds like they've got the best fucking life. It's under the radar. They'll, they'll walk around today. No one knows who they are. They just do their thing, go, go the down beach. the beach. The weather's good. Uh, no, nah, it sounds like the, the giant – sounds like they, it'd be a great place to play when you're winning. Yeah, he, and he just says that he's like, because everyone gets drafted to Sydney, no one's from Sydney at GWS. It's just a big local footy club there. They're just a local footy club that plays in front of Australia. Like, they're all best mates. They do everything together. They drink together. Um, they just happen to be playing AFL and absolute gun. So, that is so fucking cool. And just hearing him talk about Jesse Hogan, like, he just loves it up there. He gets to do his own thing. Just, yeah, they're just a family at GWS. It's, that is awesome. It's fucking good. But, Jeb, let's go back to Friday night. So The showies. Were, yeah, yeah, the showies. So you were in the sports bar wait, waiting to come home. I was at work, so I had the earplugs in. I've watched the highlights, though, but we're getting messages. Jeb, I'm sure you've got a lot of receipts to go through. The Swans are cheeks. They're going to get absolutely railed in this one. Primetime Swans, Showtime Swans. What are they doing? Three-quarter time, they're down, Jeb. The two champions that hadn't really gone near it. Oh, you'd probably say three because Gordon hadn't really touched it as well. Jev, what a performance by the Swans. They come back and they end Collingwood season. It is done. The Swans get it done on Friday night in one of the best last quarters you will see this year. Jev, talk me through it. Welcome back from <laughs> Bali. Oh, so I was at Bali Airport. I, all I wanted was just uh, to just find a screen playing or else I was going to have to legal stream it on the Bali Airport Wi-Fi and just figure out how to watch it. No KO worked over there. It was giving the shits. Just walk into Bali Airport, through customs, everything. And this was at about half time, And then I just find a pub, like a sports bar playing it. Just get a seat right at the bar, order a Bing Tang because I'm up and about, even though I'm leaving. And I'm just watching. I'm like, holy shit. Thank God this is on. And as soon as I start watching after three quarter time, I watch Collingwood kick the first three goals, go up by about 28 points, and I've just started cracking the shit. And then the messages start coming in. Swans are gone. A Swans going to make finals. Don't come home. How bad is Errol Gordon? Blah, blah, blah. All these fucking messages. Everyone has a say when it comes like they want to rip me. And then just, you know, I, I was cracking the sads as well. I'm like, fucking hell. Like, we just 
Just be better. And Collingwood, I'm not saying they just kick arsey goals. I'm, this is Collingwood, though. It's how they play. They just keep the ball alive and they do all this trickery shit with it. They keep it alive and they're just kicking all these arsey goals. And then they missed a couple. I'm like, oh, they've left the door a little open here. Three-quarter time. And then I watched Isaac Heaney have one of the all-time fourth quarters, Das. Like, all-time fourth quarter. I like – I because I – they didn't have the – um the commentary on at this sports bar. So I couldn't yeah. hear. So it's legit just – and I wasn't looking at my phone, looking at stats. I was charging my phone somewhere else, just watching. Just one of those quarters that just, like, bounces off the TV, like just stands out off the TV of how much he is dominating that game. Chad Warner, the same. So Isaac's had 14 touches. One, uh, He's had 14 touches and a goal in the last quarter. Chad had 14 touches and a goal. And they just carried us over the line. They're just like – I don't know if you heard, because I didn't listen to much footy media while I was in Bali. It wasn't because we lost by 112 points. Well, that's the reason I didn't listen to SEN and stuff. <laughs> I chose to have a week off it at all. But I just saw after, even though we had a six-day break, the club gave the Swans two days off. They're like, have Sunday, have Monday off. Come in Tuesday, mentally refresh. Just, you know, like it's a t- just forget about that game like it's a new week. Come happy. And it just felt like in the last quarter, it's like, righto, nah, enough of this shit. This isn't who we are. We're this team. And even though it, was, it wasn't it was the prettiest win, and if we play like that in the finals, all that, we're, we're not going to go far. But it just looked like in that last quarter, we just got that swagger back. We got our confidence back. It was Heaney. It was Warner. And then Golden kicks the winner after getting an absolute bath from Steel side bottom all night. He still popped up, kicked the winner, and you're just like, holy shit, that's all it takes, just like that. And now it just feels like, you know, we've got that aura back. Heaney's got his aura back. Warner's got his aura back. Golden does that. He'll go in next week, that confidence sort of thing. Blakey was playing well, so... It was just a win. It was four points. It was yeah, – and just everyone sort of hitting form again like that after a couple of crappy weeks. And j- it's just amazing what it's probably going to do for us. That's all you need, one big win. That's why I'm praying that the Blues get one big win today. But Hoskin Elliott, the mythical one, Jeff, he just got the matchup wrong at Goulden at that stoppage at the end. I think he ran into his own teammate. Goulden got out on his left, kicked that. But when I was listening to it, um, it sounded like – because obviously you guys were down. It's like, fuck, the pie's kicking another, pie's kicking another. Will Hayward, he buried the first one, I think, of the last quarter. And on the call, they're just like, Will Hayward, he's like, he's getting up and about. Is this going to be yeah. the spark that gets that finally gets the Swans going? But momentum in footy, Jev, you know you're going to get your chances. Whether you convert on it or not, every time you watch a game, a team gets a swing of goals. You're always going to get your chance, but sometimes it doesn't feel like it because you might go kick it down the full or kick behinds. But you need to make the most of your opportunities, which they did in the end. And it's just amazing that Warner, Heaney, and Goulden, like those were the three that popped yep. up for you guys late. So it was an it was an all time win for you guys. Everyone was talking about oh, if they lose, everyone they're already saying Brisbane can leap them this week. Uh, then if they lose the next week, they can get leapt on and they can maybe finish outside the four. And then they just. You came back, stood on business. The pies are officially done, Jev. Um, yeah, it's just it's just a win that you guys had to have. Like I think what Hoyney said, like no team has lost like a game in their last three or four games and won the flag. So yeah. you can pretty much put a line. That means you put a line through Carlton and the Swans last week because we both lost within that last four weeks. But you guys got a good win. It doesn't matter how you win. It's almost that win's almost more. Um, probably confident for the players is in like you've had smashings all year, like you smoke sides or you've lost by like a small margin, but to actually be behind and then you've had a big comeback win. It's almost the perfect win. You could say like is exactly what you guys needed as a football club. Yeah. It just, yeah, that's the one when we kept losing close, I was never worried. The only thing I was worried about is we kept losing those close ones, but it's like we were in all those games. Then we've been pumped by the dogs, pumped by Port Adelaide. And it's like, holy shit. Is it just, going downhill, but finally to come from behind, win a close game. We've, we've ticked a couple of boxes there. I just want to see that confidence back. As I said, now the roast part of it does. Here we go. The fucking Collingwood supporters whinging about the umpiring after they've been kissed on the dick for the two years now. Just mm. the gall of them to think they're allowed to whinge about umpiring when they, no one gets kissed on the dick more than Collingwood for the last two years. That's why you'll only see Collingwood supporters whinging about the umpiring and the rest of Australia is just like, 
oh, they like they're just like, yeah, we don't care because that's all that happens to you every single week, sort of thing. You just get kissed on the dick. Nick Dacos especially gets umpired differently, so they can get fucked. Oh, that like that fifty meter penalty to thing. Yes, that's 50 metres. Thing is, Tom McCartan did a bit of a – he played it up a bit, but the umpire was calling him back and he was walking back with his hands up. Then McStay decided to play on, so it's play on. Either you call 50 like that or if the umpire gives McCartan a chance to move back because he stepped over the mark, that's what he was doing. So he was moving back. He got called to stand. McStay played on. Like, it wasn't 50. They had to pay it straight away or not pay it. You can't whinge about that. Um Instead of when you about the umpire, why don't you put someone on Isaac Heaney or Chad Warner and stop it at the actual source rather than relying on the umpires to win you a fucking game again? I'm so glad Collingwood season is over. They're the worst reigning premiers of all time. They're due for a rebuild because they are old and average. Nick Dacos covers up that many cracks when the Swans tag him like they do every time and he doesn't play that well. They're just bang on average football team. So, yeah, thank God we're not seeing them in September, Dust. No, I like it, Jeff. That's a, it's a good take on it. Um, I was going to say, yeah, we, do, we never like to – get it to the stage where it's like the umpires cost us because you guys are up by like what 20 something points 22 points at three quarter time just finish the game yeah and you guys didn't you had a full quarter to do it and you didn't speaking about how John long my gave the swans the week off i honestly think they should just give quainer the rest of the year off jeff <laughs> <laughs> don't let him near a treadmill don't let him near anything force him to go to bali for a month and just relax because even though he had a good game, 17-1, and one, I just think that they're, they're cooked, Jeff. They're done. They beat us last week, but I don't care. They're done. Their season's over and it makes me happy. Let's go over some odds though, Jeff. So Will Hayward was the man of the moment. So three goals. He was 420, which was nice for Will. That's so Is nice. he still sore as? Well, he looks like he's just he might, he'd be getting jabbed up, but it just must be getting better every week. He's been pretty big for us the last couple of weeks. Had a shocker against Port Adelaide, but the whole team did. And now, like, yeah, he's just he looks like he it should be right come first final, hopefully. Yeah, Bobby Hill two goals, two sixty five. We also had Luke Parker for two snags at three eighty. See, he's been a massive inclusion. I'm not too sure. Um, like, uh, he obviously stays in that spot. Like, he, yep. he doesn't come out of the side. I just think he's so much better than Taylor Adams, Jeff. I – he's sort of playing, just from my eye, that sort of Jake Melksham role where, he's, as I said, he's so, sort of trying to play behind the defense. Like um, Blake um, Hardwick did – for Hawthorne that day, gather around against Collingwood. Like he's just sort of staying at home. I'm super excited to see him playing the same team as Tom Papley, whereas Amadi, McLean, they fly at everything. And then um, Papley's at the feet or Parker's out the back of defenses and Haywood's the one hitting up. So I'm super excited to see him get a bit fitter, start playing. He looks good. Hopefully he gets a little bit of midfield time as he gets fitter, but it's hard to change our midfield right now. Yeah. Chad's kick two. What did Chad pay for two dars? So Chad for two. Sorry, I accidentally skipped past him. Chad Warner was 230, which isn't much, but the touches, Jeb, this is where you would have made a bit of cream on the boys. So for 30 touches, Isaac Heaney was 410 and Warner was 450. Nice. Which is awesome. Uh, D- Josh Dacos was four. Oh, no, it's 30. 25, he was a dollar 89. All the rest pretty sure. No, Matty Roberts. Morgs' man. He is Morgs, $2.70, Jeb. Yeah, so he's he got the round zero rising star nominee, Dars. Played did. the first 10 weeks, was playing fucking well. Then he got dropped for a while. I'm like, you drop a you drop a first year player, it's gonna kill his confidence. He's come back in like just he just calls for the ball, like just give me the ball at all times. I'm so impressed with just how much confidence he has as a first year player. In the position he's playing, it's almost like Oppositions don't even know he's there, or they oh, don't give you, a fuck. About it. Like they don't matter. Some like, would not know who he is. Yeah, but he like just like when you guys have the ball, he'll just run to that next kick spot. Yeah, as you said, and like no one man's up. He's just like, yep, I'm here, and they just give him the ball, and, and off they go. So great win, Jev. Um, is yeah, that Ma- Mason Cox's last game of football, Dars? I hope so. <laughs> I can't stand him. So we always say if. You've been big on it, Jeb. If you could build any player in a lab, like if you go like attributes, so height, like goal Size, kicking, everything, like, like weight, like, speed, everything, I would build Bond and Pally. You're building Bond. If you could build the worst player in the game, like 
<laughs> attributes like super tall, shin guard, goggles, Collingwood, non Australian, like, a shit haircut, American, yeah, <laughs> shit <laughs> accent. And then Aver- uh, bang on average podcast. The way he celebrates and stuff. Oh, he's the he- ultimate heel. He's yes. Australia's heel. Like yeah. a wrestling heel. Oh, God, he does me. When he shushed the crowd in the first quarter, then didn't get another kick. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, Jeb, good win. Great uh, win. We roll. So let's do – because we couldn't obviously do any gambling stuff with Finn on the pod. Let's do the odds of Lions, Giants, Stars. This game was just awesome. Yeah, plus Finn sort of told us a bit more off camera, as we said. But being down plus 25 contested possessions at quarter time is just unbelievable. So as he said on uh, – he got, they cancelled all line meetings and Kingsley just said, fuck your line meetings, bring it in. And he didn't go into any detail, but I have a feeling he just called him a bunch of soft cocks, basically. Yeah, he he pretty, cannot pretty much be said. down 25 contested possessions. That's pretty much what he said. He's like, he's like, boys, we're not fucking playing final. Like, if this is it. Don't <laughs> stop, stop fucking round, Jev. So Let's put our head over it. All the, So they've kicked four goals, seven, the lines to one point. All the numbers say... It should have been 50, 60 points a quarter time. So they're it's lucky true. it's 30 points. I mean, as I was saying, I reckon the Giants just cost Oscar McInerney an All-Australian jacket. You cannot come up against Lockie Keith Keef. if you're the All-Australian Ruckman and lose that game. They kick six goals from cent- from clearances and centre bounces and stuff like so, yeah. the Giants did. And, and Brisbane didn't kick one. So they've, just, they've come in and just showed that Oscar McInerney actually isn't that important. I um I didn't want to tell Finn because obviously we didn't want to go through any odd stuff, but I, I should have just taken him one out. I took him for 20 in a snag, but I multied it into some other shit, which ended up losing. I'm shattered. But the local produce multi, Jeb, for 20 and one was paying 550. Oh, stop it. I know. I just, I was like, he's coming on the pot. He'll fucking kick a goal. So for a goal, he was 450. Wow. Yeah, I know. I was like, he'll fucking kick one. So I had it into for some. I don't know why I didn't take it one out. I took it into some other things. I'm like, fucking imagine. Yeah, and then if you added GWS to win, they were paying like twos. It would have been like eleven to one for the local produce multi. I'm a fucking idiot. Uh, you know when you're doing it, I'm just like, oh fuck. But he was the second highest rated player on the ground, which is as soon as he started, like he kicked the goal. I'm like, he's actually having a fucking good as game. Yeah. He, did you watch it? The I rest watched the second it. half. The How good is like even some of the kicks he was biting off? Like, yeah, yeah, there was a massive one in the last quarter. Yeah, still on the ground. He's like, fuck it, I'm just going for it. Like yeah. what um, uh, James Sisley did one earlier in the year. It's just like, oh my god, he's just going straight in the middle, and they rolled through. But some odds. Let's go some goals. So Cadman, he's a fucking, he's gonna be a player, Jeb. I oh. think we mentioned it at the start of the year. How good is it that like as a number one pick? He got brought into this side. Like he can learn off Riccardi, Hogan, yep. like some of the others, like guys that have been there, even just some of the coaches and like you can get to learn there, not as much pressure. Like some, some games he doesn't go near it, but yep. other games he shows flashes. He's definitely put on a bit of size, but three snags, 975 yesterday. Uh, yeah, and then like him being dropped out of the side, it'd be annoying, but it's sort of like um, – then he goes gets to play the Jesse Hogan role in the two. So then he gets to have, you know, yeah. 25 footies kick to him, take 10 marks, kick five goals. Then he comes back in the seniors where he's a role player. He gets live reps. He gets to improve. Then he has a couple of games in the twos. He's just getting better and better. He's going to be so good, Dars. It's, yeah, he's going to be so good. Hogan for three, that would have been $1.70. Two ten. That's nice. Uh, Archie for two. Danaher for two. Archie for two. The sneeze. Where do you go? Three ninety. Danaher was a dollar forty four. Where's our man? Darcy Jones was five eighty. He five was- eighty. Two last quarter goals. Electric speed. He must be quick. I've trained with Finn Callan and he's fucking quick. Imagine how quick Darcy Jones must be. Oh, he just turn you on a dime. And then um, touches. Will Ashcroft with the most on the ground. Twenty nine. He's just building nicely. He was due for a big game, wasn't he? So, so it's 20, all 25s. Yeah, so 25, he would have been paying heaps. 360, it's not and bad. And it's Tom Green, Lockie Whitfield. They would have paid a dollar nine for 25. Lockie Whitfield was a dollar oh seven. 
It's fucked. And he only just got there. It was actually really cool. It was a bit of an ego off. Lockie Whitfield going near Dane Zorko. And it was sort of like, who's going to be more damaging in this last quarter? Because they just didn't stand near each other. And it's like Zorko would back himself to be damaging. And he did do this fucking sick kick through the corridor. But then Lockie Whitfield was also getting score involvement. So it was sort of like, righto, let's go. We'll go head to head. Who has more impact in this last quarter? That was a really good game. Good game of footy. Two big dogs. And it's just amazing how if the Swans lost and the Lions won, the Lions would have been on top of the ladder. Yep. And now they're uh, now they're only they're six points off the Swans now and like they're fifth Perfect. on the ladder. Like it's just a huge swing of momentum sort of thing. I don't think people understand. Like so we spoke to Finn before we started recording, which we had some of it as well because it's pretty funny. Um I said, what was it like the heat? Because on the on the on the call, they like it's twenty four degrees, eighty percent humidity. He's like, it was fucking so hot out there. He's like, boys were cramping all day. He's like, it was definitely hot. And I think they felt it at the start of the game. As you said, did get jumped by thirty points, but I don't think people understand how much how big of a road win that is. Down thirty quarter time against the Lions, who are rolling at the moment. Like you just think that that goes to the sword. So. If I had to give you ten thousand dollars right now, Jev, ten thousand. Oh, you probably still put on the Swans, but you had to put it on a team to win the premiership. Like you know, your gut feel. Like obviously, you want the Swans. Like I'd want the Blues. But who does the Giants just edge you now? Like a little bit more a after last bit. year. A little like, bit. It just that win. It's just like fucking like yeah. Like they know how to win on the road. They seem to love it, and now that they're they, they're peaking for this time, like it'd be a good bet. What are they paying? I want to watch the dogs play today. Yeah, for sure. I want to watch the Giants? It's like Giants dogs the- in a few weeks. <sighs> Yeah, it's I don't know. I actually don't know. I obviously I'd have my te- if you handed me ten thousand, I'd have it on the Swans. But if it was my ten thousand, I just probably would save it. I just have no idea. Giants are six bucks. Yeah, it's worth a sprinkle, isn't it? It's it's honestly the difference of winning and losing yesterday. And as as he said, if they lose the last two or only win one, they can finish seventh. How's this? So Freo were into like seven bucks the other day. Yeah, and if they if they beat the bombers, they come in at five fifty. If they win yesterday, they come back to around there. They're back out to twenty one dollars now. Oh my god, they've generally cost themselves. Now they're going to go to GWS and they can't lose. They can't. It's if the bombers won last night, they're on the same amount of points as Frio. <laughs> the bombers have lost. Yeah, no, nah, they're. Oh. They can't lose this. Oh, God, it's a crazy ladder. All right, next game, Das. Um, Yeah, that game was awesome. That felt like a final. Just, yeah, hearing how GWS just have a couple of beers and it's just you're allowed to celebrate as long as you do your recovery. You've got your seven-day break. It's just so cool. West Coast, uh, North, down in Tassie. This was an all-time dogging from North Melbourne, Das. Like an all-time dogging with an awesome finish. Oh, oh, sorry. Are we talking about this game? No, I was going to say, I think we'll, we'll leave this game. We'll come back to it. We'll come back to this game. Okay. okay we'll come back. What a finish. Uh, Frio, Geelong, this, uh, just hearing Kingy on Fireball Friday, Dust, just saying, this is going to be a, what did he say? Like an assault. They're just going to roll up, get the job done, get out of there. A heist sort of thing. Mm. Geelong are going there for a heist and they did exactly that. They just... They just got it done. Jez kicked one of the best goals I've ever seen for the first goal. Did you, have you seen that, Dars? Yeah. yeah, he's fucking – he's so clutch, isn't he? He just went back, set shot, kicked it. It was a good game. It was Frio having all the possessions and then Geelong just making the most of the footy and putting pressure on. And it's just always like Geelong wins. It's Tom Stewart. It's Danger. It's Jez Cameron. And then it's, you know, their role players popping up. They just – Oh, they just got it done. They were just too good. It was Danger's last quarter. Like, what did he have in the fourth quarter? One goal, one, seven touches. He was super physical, six contested possessions. Like, he just got him over the line, Dars. He's just a one and 20 player this year, isn't he, Danger? Like, yeah. he's not going like above 20. It's like, that's my quota. That's all. No, it's just moments, up. just big moments. He just fucking goes a million miles an hour. But, yeah, no, I love your call of, like, yeah, uh, Frio definitely had more of the footy and the Giants were just making most of the opportunities. Grian Myers kicked a great goal as well from yep. the pocket. I, the commentary di- team didn't even know that he kicked it. Like, he yeah. barely celebrated. He's just like, yeah, sweet, Especially let's go. Especially with how quiet 
Optus Stadium is when another team kicks a goal. If the if the commentators aren't up and about, I actually didn't know the giant uh, the cats were kicking goals. They were just like. It was just like, and he's kicked it, and then the stadium was dead quiet. Like, yeah, it was just a cool game. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I, I don't think there's much to really bag about either side or like roast either side. I just think it was a good game. If there's anything that I do want to see, though, I definitely want – Frio should just wear these jumpers all the time. I reckon they look so them? much better. Yeah, I just, reckon, I just reckon they're so much better than purple ones. But Geelong have just – if they win the flag, Jev, oh. no, let's just think about this for a minute. This is what I want to put on the agenda. If they win the flag, no one has been talking about them all year. No, I jumped that often. Oh. So they've got the Saints at Marvel, which isn't an easy win, but they, you know, they'll be confident. And then they've got West Coast coming to GMHBA. So they're on 56 points. Let's say they win their next two. So they're 100% going to be on 64. Swans are on top on 60 right now. So if Swans win one of the next two with our percentage, we'll finish on top. I can see the Cats finish in second dust because, as we said, GWS have fucking Frio and then um, the Dogs at Ballarat or Bendigo, whatever it is. That is not an easy fixture. Free, uh, Port Adelaide, who do they have their last two? They've got a showdown next week and mm-hmm. then Frio at Opta Stadium. The, it, like, unless it's the Giants, I can see the Cats finishing second. Home we final. S- we said they'd probably. We said at the start of the year now, thing you know, that they will finish top four just because of their run home. Run. So unbelievable. I'm pretty sure um because I left, I was going out for dinner. But as I was leaving, they said the sarong was a little bit sore. So then he went off and they put him, they played him out of the cage. So he ended up kicking three goals. So they played him in a different way. You couldn't get him for three goals though, but for two goals was 10.50. Caleb Sarong, Jeff, he's having a fucking unbelievable season. When you watch him, I just feel he's a player that you just love to play like. He's oh, just yeah. always around it, like inside field, like just trying to dot up his teammates. I do he, love watching. When he John. went forward, he played like he was Josh Tracy yesterday. He played like yeah. he was 195 centimeter center forward. He was just leading up, jumping up, clunking everything in the air like He's super confident. Jaya missed us. He had a couple of bad. He had a bad miss. Yeah, like he did. He, he just had to kick that one. Also, oh, and then the the cats just overwhelm the teams with just like how much they're always coming and going forward with the footy. And like then Freo would get it and they'd take like Luke Ryan's had 36 touches, like 34 kicks, two handballs. He was just take, like, you know, they'd win it back. They'd take their time chipping it up the field. And then the Cats would get it gone a million miles an hour, lock it in their half. They just, it was just, yeah, a battle of two coaching boxes and they just get the win. How much does Luke Ryan look like Jesse Hogan? You reckon? <laughs> They're the same body shape. They look yeah. identical. They've got the same haircut at the moment. Um, just want to say uh, I feel sorry for all the all the young ladies in Fremantle last night. Shannon Neal, Jeb, apparently went absolutely <laughs> berserk. He was handing out wheelchairs left, right, and center. Shannon Neal for two snags, uh, $2.40, Jeb. So he put it – apparently those posters up. I'll kick two – Pay for the drinks tonight. So everyone just knew $2. The Cowboys in town. Every, yeah, Cowboys in town. Everyone pretty much went down to their local betting agency. They put 100 on down on that. They got 240 Shannon Neal paid for the drinks and then handed out the wheelchairs to the ladies. Like he had an absolute night. So apparently the team went back last night in the red eye. He's coming back to Sarvo. Shannon (laughs) Neal. He's just the least. Seven birds on the red eye, you reckon? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Any other? Sean Manor for two? Yeah, Sean Manor was 5'10", which was nice. Tell you, like, I don't watch – last week I didn't because I was on the flight to Bali. But, like, Freo games from start to finish, I don't see him all the time. Watching Hayden Young for a full game of football, Dars, is a pleasure. Yeah, the way he's he, done. He's confidence at the moment and the way he runs out of stoppages. And then you hear how he's the number one kick inside forward 50. But then you actually watch it and you watch the composure and he just takes – he slows himself down and he just makes sure he doesn't turn it over. Like he never – you know Danger, Danger picks it up, breaks a tackle and kicks it 70 metres to the top of the goal square. Even if there isn't a Geelong play there, it's like it's how he plays. You see Hayden Young, he slows it down. He just makes sure he doesn't turn it over. He just hits the target always. Oh, he was was a pleasure to watch. He had – I don't know if it was the second or the third quarter, about 10, 15 minutes of footy that was just out of this world. Yeah, he's he's his last couple of weeks, especially definitely been more bursting. But as you said, maximum damage when he does yeah. get it. Uh, we better slide through the next game, Jeff, because we've got a few more to get through. We're totaling up at the moment, almost onto an hour. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, the two Saturday night games were fucking cheeks. Both yeah. of them were cheeks. Let's start with Melbourne, Port Adelaide. Port right. Adelaide win by two points. This was – this game, there was no one there. <laughs> like, where are the Melbourne supporters? The snow. Well, it just – it felt like – Last week with the Swans game, you know, I always say it's like a roulette spin. It went back to the middle, Port Adelaide, are, uh, Swans are red, Port Adelaide are black, roulette spin, black comes up, Port Adelaide kicked a goal. Last week, it just felt like Port Adelaide were just on fire, basically. They just, mm. they kicked it. This, then it, they come to Melbourne and Melbourne are like, nah, we aren't letting you do that sort of thing. We're just slowing it down defending you, playing our shit, contest defense, a million boundary throw-ins, a million stoppages, make it ugly. And they led all game the Ds and it just took Port to the very end of the game to hit the front and win. Seven goals, 11 to seven goals, nine. It was a stinker. It was Horn Francis. It was Butters. Uh, it was just cheeks, basically. It must be just so, especially for Melbourne, they've been thereabouts though in some of these games and it's just hard to think, what if we had Petrarca still? Yeah, yeah. Like, like if they the played winner. like that last night, like they win. Yeah, they win a lot of these other close games. But Jev, mail it in. Melbourne are done. It's just a good win. Port Adelaide had to win. It's just they were getting fucking torched, absolutely torched a few weeks ago. Being like, we hate Ken. Like, get rid of him. Like, this is fucked. And the fact that they've been able to turn it around and just continue to win. Like, if you just look at the wins and losses, it's like, and you don't actually watch the game. It's like, fuck, they've won again, won again, won again. Yeah. I just still don't know if they're a good side. I actually still would like to come up against them in the finals. Like if yeah. you did, like you're not a team that really scares me. I don't know why they just, they don't. I just think they're, I know they've been kicking goals, but their big forward line just seems so dysfunctional at times. And I just think their back line's so gettable. Like their midfield's great. And I love how they're just trying to surge the ball forward. Yeah. Um, but I just don't know. Every time we've seen them in the finals, they just sort of just dog it a little bit. I don't want to come up against him in the finals. <laughs> I don't yeah. want the Swans to play him in the finals. Please, no. No, no. no, no so no. not after last week. The Swans will be spooked after last week. But um, Clayton Oliver Das. Oh, no. I, I don't know how to say it nicer than this. He's your man. Uh, he's my man. They were treating him like no. – I can't say. I can't no, Jeff. They, it was honestly like he was a hooker on the, on the corner yeah. of the street. Every midfielder that found him, themselves matched up onto him just took him to the goal square and kicked a goal on him and then went back up. So it was yeah. Big Horn Francis, you take him to the goal square, then Rosie Wood, then, then Butters Wood. It was like, it was so fucked. And the, the goal Butters kicked on him where he was just chasing him with tight hips and Butters just looking back, having a bounce, having a laugh at him, kicking. It was so sad. I don't know if he's the most injured man in history. and He, would, he has to be. His foot's buggered. His ribs buggered. His hand's buggered. I don't know. He might have a little nick in his like, you know, quad or something. And he just needs to go to Bali, have a month off, and then get back and do the biggest preseason ever because he can still play. But it was just hard to watch last night. Oh, I feel for him. I honestly do. Because if you yeah. put his magnet on the field, you got to rely on him to be the bull midfielder. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, for sure. If he's out there, he's got to be the bull. And if he's just getting beaten like he has been, it's like he's either going to be playing twos because he's not the sort of guy that can play any other position. So, no. oh, it's just hard. Um, so you got some odds for me, Das? Yeah, because he picked four goals, Jeb, which was nine dollars seventy five. Which nice. was he was good. He's just. I think it was Kane Corn said the other day that he's he should deliver more because he's so up and so up and down, which is to be fair, like he's he's got all the talent in the world, but he just doesn't bring it every week. Charlie Dixon, I called for his retirement weeks ago. I can't believe he's still paying a dollar eighty three for two. He's just play, he's just playing a role, isn't he? He just stands himself on a he would have stood himself on May or Lever last night. Watch him, and he watch just him competes. Jeff. Watch him crack the shits in the finals when he doesn't get a kick. Horn Francis for two goals was three twenty. Oh, Alex Nilbull and ran twenty four Ks last night, Jeff. <laughs> Zach, I'll right, we'll go touches. Zach Butters for 30, one goal and 30. Zach Butters, 210. He's a good player, Zach Butters. And then it's all 25s. Boak, Houston, Horn Francis, Rosie, all 25. Houston, 215. Boak, 575. Horn Francis, $2.95. That's nice. Clayton Hall is at 16. What has yeah. happened? <laughs> He's buggered, oh Jeff. He's oh, buggered. That's that game. That game was cheeks. Where are the Melbourne supporters? This game 
Gold Coast win after the siren to get their first road win of the season. Their season is over. They can't make finals. They haven't won one road game for the year, for the whole year. They go to Marvel Stadium where Damien Hardwick hates. It would have been freezing there. They just they just don't win at Marvel Stadium. In their history, they've never beaten Essendon at Marvel Stadium. And they kick a goal after the siren to beat the Bombers oh. by a point. Oh, God, when you say it all out loud, it is fucking hilarious. Dope. I saw it. I said it last two weeks. I'm like, and even last week when they beat Fremantle in what was like one of the most convincing we it's just like the Bombers are back, the fucking edge. They're playing for the coach. They're playing for Joe Watson, Jeff. Like they're, they're doing everything. And it's just like goal Coast have just been embarrassed again by West Coast, called uncompetitive by Will yep. Schofield, like no leadership. They've got no one in the side that wants to put their hand up. And then once again, they've come out of like the sauna. They've had to travel, Jeb. So from the Gold Coast to Perth, back to the Gold Coast, oh. and then to the Igloo where it's freezing. So they're back in the ice bar. They hate it there. The Bombers are rolling. If they win this, they're inside the eight. They can leapfrog a few sides. They're and- even on point with Frio, who were like second on the ladder a week yeah. ago. And, and Frio lost earlier in the day so they're like perfect boys hey this is where we go this is the launch pad and then they just can't bury them under the lid Jeff in what was oh I just kept checking the scores we're out for dinner and there was two minutes to go I was with the shark and we're just like put it on and I'm like and you, you were saying, I was watching, I'm like, Mac Andrews is rolling, Mac Andrews is rolling. Yeah. I'm like, if he's lined up on Laverde in the end, they're winning. <laughs> and he oh. just couldn't get to him. Oh, just that mark went back, buried it, Jev. Fuck me. That's awesome. Like, so I, I, uh, you would have saw my post last night. Asked, Every team this round was down at three-quarter time and won crazy. the game. Every single team. It's just unbelievable. And the Bombers – we're down by four points. And I'm like, I can see it happening again because they're at home, all this stuff. You should have watched the whole last quarter. They've kicked one goal nine. It was one so nine. One goal nine in the last quarter. I didn't think it was that much. Oh, my God, it was one nine. It was so hard to watch. It was Jake Stringer just missing. They were just – Sam Draper, he's kicked three goals too. His two points were set shots in the last quarter that he's just sprayed. They were so bad. Um, who else? So Stringer's kicked one three. I'm pretty sure he kicked zero three in the last quarter. Zero three in the last quarter. Sam Draper, he's fourth quarter, zero two. It was so fucked watching him. And then I don't know if you saw the Jade Gresham one. He – Two minutes ago, pushed the bloke in the back, kicked that the goal. Was, Crowd went nuts. He went nuts. It was given push in the back. I watched that live. Yeah, we watched that bit live. That was – because I've gone back and watched the replay since. Oh, the mini. That was 100% in the back. Yeah. As soon as it was, I call the show, I'm like, that's in the – you can't just fucking yeah. shove someone. So that I think that was the right call. But Gold Coast's ability to just continually get it in. Did you see the one oh, – it was probably a minute ago – Collins had it and just went to hit the outside. Yeah, and he's kicked and just it out of, out of bounds. And Jake Rogers had one as well. He had it from the 50. Yeah. And he had someone in board and he took Ben King on like the pocket. It's like, why are you kicking there? It's like, oh, they're just going to dog it. And they just put it to the hot spot. But if it wasn't for Mac Andrews, Jeb, that I said after, after he played on Charlie Kerner, I watched him live. We can go back and listen to that, Rose. So I was just like, He's going to be an all Australian. Like he's wherever a you, freak. Wherever you want to play him, like yeah, he'll be he an all Australian. But- and you saw I tweeted last night. So uh, half time. What was the score at half time? Yeah, the Bombers were up by two goals at half time. He kicked two goals in the first four minutes after the third three quarter time uh, in the third quarter. And I tweeted like Mac Andrews is saving Saturday Saturday night footy. He was just a pleasure to watch. And then to see him at the end. How good is it how Sam Collins, even though he was probably a little far out, he didn't just kick it to that 15 meters out where everyone flies, it hits a million yeah. hands. He pulled it a little, sort of like 30 out, and Mac Andrews was on the run, on the move, just clunked it. Oh, our man Jed Walters asked, kick two, two kicks, two goals, basically. It was good to see him kick a snag. I was worried. I had him in a multi for one, and I, I'm like, oh, he's not getting a kick here, but he worked his way into it. Ben King was really good, Darth. Ben King. 
He was great. He just competed. He competed. He competed. It's what I get angry about him sometimes. But he flew at everything. He got his hands to everything. Um, and Matt yeah. Rowe, Jeff. Matt Rowe, the last he, two weeks, has has put them on his back. Like, like how physical, physical he is at the moment. He just breaks tackles. Like, he just gets it and he just gets He gets his arms moving. But where is this? Because sometimes he's like, when he's on, he, he's, oh, his pressure is just like, where's your like a wet blanket just tackles you again and again? He would be like, you would hate to verse him on like a sand drill in preseason. Yeah. I can. He would like a tackling drill. That, he yeah, just, that is what he's a freak at. Wrestling in the sand and shit. Like, it oh. would suck. It you know, would that, suck. What, was that, what was that game that we played? Everyone did like an ankles. We were on a preseason camp and everyone had to tie one shoe on. Yeah. And you're in teams. And the only way you get people eliminated, you have to rip off their shoe. And Birdman broke about five under <laughs> nineteen kids' ankles. Just the curd ankle, the curd ankle ankle lock. Just get it. Tap, tap. Choking Sam, blokes out. Sam Larkins would have him in a cripple cross face. Someone's <laughs> giving a one-legged Boston crab. Oh. <laughs> You've got Birdman just breaking ankles. Fuck. Fuck. No wonder why we didn't make it that year. Um, um, we'll go through some odds, but Mac Andrews, Jev, kicking four. So this is why it's so important. Bad kicking is bad football. Good kicking is good football. One goal, nine in the last quarter. You've only got yourself to blame Sounds when to you've blame. got good looks. Mac Andrews has kicked four straight. Four straight. That's he good was a football. Awesome. He's such a good player. He's the sort of boke ass. If he played a full year, as he said, full year at fullback, he could be all Australian. Full year at centre-half back, he could be all Australian. Full year as a forward, he could be an all Australian forward. Even a full year as a ruckman, he could nearly be an all Australian ruckman. He's fucking awesome. All right, so before I give you some odds, if you oh, – right, you've got him oh, – not so much your club. We'll, we'll say the Suns, all right? So you've got him at the Suns. You have to put the magnet somewhere for the year. Are you playing him back or forward? At the Suns, back. I reckon yes, back. Bam. So oh, I'm, well, we're hoping Jed Walter comes on a bit more next year, Ben King, and then you have Mac Andrews. As soon as you can loosen him up in that back line, he will start marking everything. But he floats and his ability to close space where it's yeah. like you're out and he's just – he gets the arm in. He, he's going to be like – uh, like the Kevin Durant of AFL. Like the, he's going to be the slim reaper of the AFL. He's going to stay this this weight. I don't know what he weighs. He's going to stay slim and he's just going to mark everything for years. How much is he? So his next contract. So he was, he's from Melbourne. He did, he was part of the Melbourne Academy. Academy, yeah. Because they couldn't get him under pick 40 or whatever. They lose him. So he went to the Suns. Some clubs are going to be throwing some serious money at him, Jeff. Oh, yeah. A million dollars a year for sure. One, 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 two, one, three. Yeah. So, some odds. So, Mac Andrews, we couldn't get him for goals the other week, Jeff, because remember, he's usually a backline yep. player. But for four goals, it was $18. That's nice. For three goals, it was six seventy five as well. Draper for three goals is nine seventy five. Knackers Caddy, our man, your man, Jeff, eight twenty five for three. That's nice. Ben King for three was two twenty five, which is nice. Flanders now, Nate King. Caddy was uh, eighty one to one for five. Someone DM'd us it. He had him for five. The point he kicked in the last quarter was a set shot forty meters out. Should have just gone back and slotted it. And it was his first miss for three goals. One, it's like oh, you just yeah. Draper two points, Caddy one point, Stringer three points, all in the last quarter. They just cost themselves. I just can't wrap my head around what it must be like being a bomber supporter. Uh, Flanders for two goals, Jev. Was he was really good. 6.25. So he had a little bit less of it. So playing a little bit more of a forward role. He played as a half forward. And accumulated. But he just seems like, I think when Stuart, so he was going to be a top 10 pick. Yep. Or a top five, but I think he went teens maybe. Or yep. like late, or like late. Um, maybe five to ten. So Gold Coast picked him up, and I just don't think he got along with Stuart Jew at all. Like yeah, he, just he just played twos. He, he just couldn't get a game, but he always got a lot of it. When he's coming to the side, whether he was a midfielder, he accumulates it. He gets a lot of it at the half back line as well. Yeah. Like wherever he seems to play, and then now when he's playing half forward, or well, last night he got less of it, but still had big impact with the ball. So, yeah, so he had. I'm pretty sure he had two goals at quarter time. Let and me just confirm that. One goal, one at quarter time, and then he kicked one in the last quarter. 
He was like, yeah, he should have kicked two in the first quarter. Yeah, half forward, he was getting himself on like Redmond or McGrath, going up to the stoppage and then just coming back into the 50 with no man with a mil- like meters and meters of space. And yeah, he was just making himself dangerous. Dimmer must really rate him because he gives him good roles. Like whatever Dimmer needs that game, if it's half back, 35 touches, if it's midfield, 30 touches, or if it's this role, two goals, 20 touches in the forward line, he must be super highly rated as a, you know, plug and play sort of guy. Reminds me a bit of like Lockie Whitfield, the way he played, the way he played yesterday as well. So yeah, he, he was, he was really good. Um, I'm so shattered. The only thing I didn't screenshot were the touches. I don't know why I didn't. I'll have a look on stat, mate, if there's oh, any. Oh, there would, because Nick, Nick Martin had 36. Rao yes, for 30, 30s would have been about like 10 bucks or eight bucks, 875 probably for Rao. I'm thinking. Yeah, it's but, not on stat, mate, yet. Oh, well. But that, that win, that pretty much puts a line through the. So the Bombers had to. So they beat Freo. They had to beat the Suns at home. And then I'm pretty sure they got Brisbane and then you boys, Jeff. So it's a pretty. They play, they play the Swans this Friday night at Marvel Stadium. I'm going. So I they to have think, to win. <laughs> no, so how do you think they feel? Oh, like, so the last two years, especially this year, let's go this year, you're pretty much top two for the first half of the year. And then even when we, we used to joke about like, oh, no, nah, they'll dog at the back end of the year. They won't make it. They'll slide. You sort of don't believe it. But Bombers fans, I actually feel for you. Like it's... Yeah. To lose like that is just horrendous. The thing so. is, though, uh, they've conceded more points against than they've kicked. Like, there's yes. 1766 points for 1839 points against. Their percentage is shit. Like, All right, so, is, so it sort of fa- is it window shopping? Is it a bit false or is it real? Yeah. Well, he, here's the, uh, is what you talk about. So, you've gone in, you know, when some players or, more like in the NFL, if someone gets like a quarterback and you look at their odds, whether they drop or whether they stay even, and yeah. you look at like where the market sees it. So they've gone out and they've got pretty much the most expensive backman that they can get. Yeah, he, he's on like 1.6 this year. Yeah, so let, let's go. Let, let's get him in to fix us defensively. And they're worse defensively this year. Yeah. They've so, conceded more points and they've kicked goals. So, like, what's he doing? So, is it the player or is it the position that they're trying to get him to play in that's not working? Yeah, or is it because they're injured without Ridley? Oh, it's just so oh, – I'd love to hear from Bomber supporters about, like, you can't have a percentage of 96, ninth, and think you – like, have they fixed anything? They're not a good offense. They're not a good defense. They're a good midfield – Good. I just don't know what they're trying to be sort of thing. Because uh, you remember when Paul Roos got to fucking Melbourne, it was all about just fix the defense and fix our percentage first. Remember he just went, they would just fix their percentage every year and then they, they you know, had an assault on the finals. I don't know what Essendon are trying to fix first sort of thing. I don't know what they're trying to do. Anyway, they got the Showtime Swans next Friday night. I'm sure if they beat us, I'll get a few DMs because I am tough on the Bombers. Yes, you are. So, Jeb, I'm about to head off. Uh, time seven. This is about 11 o'clock, so we're about to catch an Uber into the city. Uh, Carlton Hawks, 110. Hopefully, the Blues get up. It's a pick game. Hopefully, a massive crowd. Hopefully, hopefully it's a bit of fun, Jeb. Yeah. Like this is, so, this is where you cut the fluff now, Jeb. There's no – it's – it's not just like, oh, it's all right, fuck, we'll come back next week. It, this is the best time of the year where games actually mean something. Like, I'm really excited for this game. Like, you don't really get too nervous because it's like, if, we, if, we, if we're good enough, we win. If we're not, yeah. well, we're fucked. Like, oh, I can't do anything about it. Yeah. I think I've seen enough. If our, if our game plays what I think it can be, we should win. Yeah. Uh, the Hawks are playing really well. So, I'm just excited for a big crowd. It's a cracking day. It's like 18 degrees. Uh, then you got North. Uh, sorry, then we got Richmond and St. Kilda in the igloo. They'll be freezing there, Jeb. And then Adelaide Bulldogs, I'm pumped to watch the back end of that one. For yeah. some reason, I don't know why. Look, the Dogs, obviously, they should win, but an upset with Rankin at home, Jeb. Rankin for four or five goals might Ooh, be the play. Love that. Love that. All right, see you us. I'll enjoy Carlton Hawthorne. I'll speak to you later. We are back, Dope, and we have another very special guest, another local produce, a mate of ours, four-game rookie superstar, number 24 from the West Coast Eagles, Harvey Johnson. How are you, mate? Um, 
bloody stoked to be on the 100K pod. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me, boys. So pretty much we wanted to have a chat. Like this couldn't come in a better time. We've been trying to find a time for you to come on. And so you played in a game yesterday. Well, I think you guys were down by about 30-odd points midway through the third against North. They were starting to celebrate. They looked like they were pretty comfortable with how they were going. And then you guys came back with one of the all-time great comebacks. So we had the Giants and the Brisbane game on. And then me and Jeff also had your game on as well. Wanted to watch, see what you're doing, what sort of work. And the comeback in the end, Oscar Allen just coming through at the clutch and what, he finished with five goals. Can you talk us through the game, what it was like, the swings of momentum, anything that you sort of found in the game? Um, Um, It was fucking unbelievable to watch. Flipped into beast mode. So, no, it was awesome. It was awesome to get the win on the road as well. You just can't sort of – it's. there's nothing better, I reckon, than a win on the road um, with all your best mates. So, no, it was just awesome. It's just crazy, surreal. What was Jared Schofield, the new coach's message at three-quarter time? As we said, you were about 35 points down with about 10 minutes to yeah, go in the third. Just, Did he just say, just have a crack, a boys, longer. like have a bit of fun um, out there? Or we, We're always – we're big on um, – we're tougher for longer, so – you just got to sort of stick it out for another quarter. And um, if we keep bringing our pressure and intensity the way we have been the past three quarters, we'll um, get it done. So, yeah, we just backed our, backed our system. So, yeah, it was just awesome. So, awesome. Um, with some of the we, – we had a chat to Will Schofield last week and we just found it interesting, like, some of the other clubs where they're going through full rebuilds and, like, how important it is to keep some older guys. Like, guys like Tim Kelly, Elliot Yo, which is awesome that you guys got to re-sign. Uh, Duggan's still there. Like, just having those guys, how important is it to the club? Like, you see Elliot Yo like, running on water in the last quarter, really pushing through. Like, the start of the year before he got re-injured, like, was absolutely dominating. And same thing yesterday. It seems like the last two weeks, the leaders have really stood up. Yeah, like, what have I you noticed in learn so from like especially someone like there and Yo and Duggan and that every week week in week out but um yeah their leadership's gone to a whole new level and um they're just bloody awesome and they're they're just not caring but um like they just lift when we need it so um it's awesome for those boys to continuously step up week in week out and um yeah we just we love them to bit so no, nah, it's awesome, and those guys are so important for us. So, yeah, we really appreciate it, all the stuff they do for us. What's it like playing in a back line with Jeremy McGovern? So he's been dominating <laughs> in the league since probably 2015. So you would have been about nine years old, and he's been nearly the best centre-half back in the league since. What's it like playing with him? Yeah, Does he he's just, just oh, back you in and just let you let you go? Just go still so it? surreal sort of being out there with Gov. He's just... He's a beast. He just fights week in, week out, and um, you can always rely on him to get the job done. And whenever you're in a marking contest or whatever, you always just know he's going to come from behind and just either take a hanger on you or just kill it out of bounds. So, yeah, he's he's been so awesome for us the whole year. So, yeah, he's a, he's a freak, the governor. Um, can you sort of talk us through, so after a win, like do you guys get on the red eye like straight back to Perth? And like what's that sort of like like in the rooms after the game? Obviously not going to be playing finals this year, but like just big things to build on, a um, bit of a celebration yeah, knowing that you've only got, we, what, a couple more games to go. Uh, not, what's it sort just, of like? It's, it's the best feeling in the world. Like we had it against Gold Coast uh, last week especially in tight games when you win. It's just, there's no better feeling. And to see all the crowd and everyone get involved, that just brings the feeling up even better. So, um, yeah, we're pretty much just straight on the bus after the game, straight to the airport, and then, um, yeah, fly home to Perth and get in at about 11 or 11.30, I reckon. Between the three of us, we allowed a couple of sneaky beers last night on the flight um, home. I think it was an eight-day break or... So I think usually you're allowed to have a few drinks on a seven or eight day break, but yeah, we didn't have any last night on the plane. Who are you rooming with? So who are you living with? Uh, what's it like? Is there a big, is there nah, a big shack quite, of you? Is there about no, five no, of you in a share house? Is it just you and one other? Much, what's it like? to read in a host family. So he's bloody huge. Um, but no, nah, I'm living with him. Yep. been living with him for the year now. Um, and we're just, yeah, in a host family. So that's uh, awesome. Watching West Coast the last couple of weeks, you've obviously won two in a row. You're on a win streak. It's it's great to watch. It just looks like 
I don't know what your game plan is, but it's just get it in deep to Waterman and Allen as often as you can <laughs> because they are both clunking everything. Jake Waterman, the mud flap oh. against Gold Coast last week, we've taken some of the best yeah, marks. Mud flaps is that what is that what you guys are doing? Amazing. Just keep so, getting it in there. No, They'll awesome. do the rest. Like, we just obviously those two players are so important in um, our team, and obviously if we can get the ball in their hands, um, we're we're in for a good run. So yeah, we just got to not prioritize them, but we re- we want our kicks just in deep, in long. So even if those boys mark it, or if they don't, they bring it to ground. And you have blokes like Flying Ryan and um, the other bloke Tyrell D- Dewar and all these other little small forwards that can come and just get the crumbs and kick the goals. So um, yeah, deep entries to those two is just yeah really really good for us. I think. Uh, how have you found, so obviously coming from like Victoria where there's like, what, 10 teams or whatever in Victoria to going over to Perth where it's pretty much a two-team town, how have you found it? Because we were chatting to Finn Callahan earlier and it's just like in, in Sydney, like they can sort of get away with it. Like no one really knows who they are. While in Perth, it seems like every day there was at the start of the year, it was a Harley Reid back page and everything's always about West Coast, um, especially how big of a club they are. Did you notice when you went over, like, or you probably yeah, didn't realize how guess, big of a club um, West Coast is yeah, and how much publicity well, they do get? Obviously, it's a lot different over there um, in Sydney. And even speaking of Matt Flynn, who used to play for GWS, he said, like, you barely get recognized over there in Sydney. Um, so it is a lot different. A lot more fans are West Coast um, over here in Perth. So you do get recognized quite often. Um, that's if you're with Hot Dogs, Harley. Um but, but Ooh. yeah, no, it's they, they notice you a little bit, so you can't Ooh. get away with too much. Um, but yeah, they're, they're, it's like a lot of Melbourne teams, I guess. Um, if you go for West Coast or whoever, you most likely know the people that are out, if that makes sense. It's yeah. funny. We had uh, we actually had Finn Callahan on the pod earlier, and he just talked about how GWS are just a basically a gun local footy club. They're not recognized in the state. They just play footy. They all get drafted there, play together. Whereas you're playing at probably the biggest club in Australia or yeah, one of the yeah. biggest clubs. So it's, it's just it's chalk similar. and cheese, like GWS and West very, Coast, isn't it? Oh, I guess West Coast is obviously a well-known team and they've been in the league for a lot longer. But, um, yeah, with, with, with West Coast, heaps of people know them and um, heaps of people are involved. So... It's a very, it's a very long, respectful club, I guess. If that makes sense. Oh, Carlton, Carlton coming to town next Sunday, four forty game, or it would be two forty for you Sunday. Yeah, Arvo, right. they're going to limp over there. That, I don't know if you saw today, but they had about six injuries. You guys oh, must be confident. You will be licking your lips with a chance to beat the Blues, um, finish their season, and all that. And we just go in there, sort of thinking each game, every game's winnable. So, regardless of who the opposition is and where they are on the ladder, we just sort of. Um, back our team system and all that sort of stuff in against them. So um, we'll just treat it as another game. But obviously, it's our last home game for the season. So hopefully, we can get a few more fans and the Eagles faithful down there. Um, and hopefully, they can help us get a. Hopefully, they can help us get over the line um, against the Carlton. But yeah, it's just another game. It's, it's just another game. So just want to know what's been your almost like welcome to the AFL moment. Like you realized whether it was like your first training session, whether it was like how hard someone tried to run through you or like the standard of the training sessions, like whether how hard they were. But what was your first real moment? Maybe it was your first game when you yeah. went out there and you're well, just like, holy fuck, I'm actually out just, here. Like doing all, what, AFL, what was that moment? You, um, especially West Coast, you, like we've talked about before, just being out there with guys like McGovern and Duggan and Yo and – all these other superstars, that's probably um, my welcome to the AFL. But I reckon I was lining up in my first game against the Bombers on Dyson Heppel on the wing. Um, And just sort of being next to him was pretty crazy. And I was like, shit, like I'm playing AFL now. So, um, yeah, that was pretty cool. And even against Collingwood the next week, I was lining (laughs) up on half forward and still side bottoms on me. And so that was... That was pretty crazy, and um, I guess you don't sort of forget those moments, I guess. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say one of those would probably be my welcome to AFL. Is it true true or false? When you got subbed on at three-quarter time and went up to Dyson Heppel, you said, <laughs> oh, I'm going to run you off your legs, old that. man. Is that I true? I probably said something like, I'm <laughs> fresh and <laughs> oh, – I don't know, probably, maybe, but no, not those exact <laughs> words. <laughs> 
I, I, remember, I remember when you came on, you were jumping up and down, ready to go. Me, Jeff, we all messaged him. We're like, oh, fuck. He's ready, to, he's ready to run himself into the dirt here. Well, we'll probably <laughs> see you on Christmas Day doing the 100 hundreds. Me and Jeff will be absolutely chasing tail, but we'll still try and get it done, mate. We already hey, told Tim we're joining in the session this year. You just got to tape your fingers so you don't jar a finger off sure. on a mine and dance some mongrel puns. But... <laughs> Oh, the standard will be dropped. Hey, when as we as Dustin, said, we're not the Sunday footy show. Oh. We can't send you the golf clubs and the Aquilas, yeah, but we will send you a hundred K hoodie straight Thanks to your door. So we'll speak right. off camera. Thanks for having me, boys. All the best. <laughs> Ask how good was speaking to Harvey Johnson there. Just a rookie for the West Coast season. Playing with guys like Jeremy McGovern, Harley Reid. Like, God, we spoke about it's just, it is so cool seeing. I played local footy with him last year as a 17 year old. He was a senior football star, and now he's playing for the West Coast Eagles on this two game win streak. Yeah, he's a, he's a fucking legend. Like, we'll talk to him for about probably five, 10 minutes before and probably another 20 minutes after we got off. We said we didn't want to take too much of his time. Um, no, nah, he sounds like sounds like it's pretty good playing footy in Perth. Oh, it just sounds like it? it's good playing footy for a job, Jeff. It sounds like <laughs> when you chat to Finn, you chat to Harvey. It seems like a seems like a pretty good life. He didn't. Uh, he told us off camera. He didn't say it on camera. But he reckons he got a huge corky from Paul Curtis, and he's been in the ice bath all day and stuff. But he's just a young kid. All he wants to do is just play footy for the rest of the year. So I hope he plays against Carlton next week. He's been like he's been playing some good footy. So it is so good to watch. Yeah, so we didn't really touch on it as much because we didn't want it when uh, we had Harvey on. But North fucking dogged it, Jeff. Like, dogged it. It was one of the all-time doggings. Like, they looked real happy. They wouldn't pass it to Larky. Like, in the last – Paul Curtis turned his back twice. He's like, fuck it. I'm just going to kick three here in the last quarter and just and just do my thing. Power kicked a goal. And then it's just like the Oscar Allen show. Like, Waterman – only kicked one goal four, like just didn't have his day. Um, Gaff came in and just went back with the flight and took the mark. That was so impressive. Second last game, and they knew in the commentary, like, I don't think he's going to get the distance. Hurried it up. Oscar Allen got to the feet and kicked his fifth in just – Oh, he's just a fucking player. So some odds on this one. Oscar Allen for five goals was $14. Geez, that's nice. Paul Curtis kicked three goals for Jeff. That was four dollars ninety. Jamie Cripps is a professional footballer, Jeff. He's yep. in he's in the echelon of professional fours at seven seventy five for three. Harry Sheasel for two. She's money for two was three twenty. Yo for two. Yo. Nine seventy five. He Powell looks so and explosive. Tico. Tom Power, Bryn Teagle for two. Teagle was 380 for two. Power would be like 15s. Well, he couldn't get him. He's had two and 26. That's a big day. He couldn't Jeez, get him Larky not kicking a second. Is, it just cost a couple of multis, didn't it? it then ever. touches. Jeez, McKercher gets a lot of the pill. 37. Could he still win right this hour? What was he for 35? 35, Colby McKercher was 460. Sheasel, two goals, one thirty-one touches. Was he the best player on the ground? Does he get the Brownlow votes? When you oh. lose at the end, the Brownlow votes still up in the air. Does Oscar Allen get them? Oh, I think oh, the way Oscar Allen kicked those late goals, like just when it's – I feel when you're that far behind and it comes clutch in the end and you have to like convert, and he did. Like He just made sure that he got it done. So – I don't know. I don't know what they saw. I thought Ali Yo was re- like Ali Yo. He had like a danger field game, only seventeen. But when he got it, it was just like jump yeah. on lads. We're going for it. So what did the helmet Hercules Tristan Jerry pay for thirty dars? Thirty. <laughs> Tristan Jerry, thirteen bucks. Yeah, so that is nice. Can he fall into an all Australian spot here? Well, well, Oscar McInerney lose it. Like I know it's he was the highest ranked player. I know they. Always give uh, the Ruckman super high ratings, which is I'm against. I think they get rated too highly. But yeah, like he so he was doing his part. Like, what were they going clearances? Because it was just off turnover and everything else. They weren't getting near it. I'm pretty sure. Hit outs, forty three to thirty three clearances. Yeah, no, it was just a pretty good game. But Darth, good. before I before we move on for the next game, I just have to. Tell you who North could have used when they were 36 points up with about 10 minutes to go in the third quarter. Hmm, let me think. Like a Darren Glass, maybe? <laughs> like Cal Wilkie, maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you saw, but the take I did at round seven saying, who says no this trade, LDU, Cal Wilkie, 
went on Twitter this week of just some random bloke and it went <laughs> fucking viral. And if you find it, go and read the comments because they are so fucking funny. It's just like, this is what happens when you give anyone a mic for a podcast or like, who's this moron? Like, don't let this bloke speak again. So it was quite funny. And then today we had, I haven't said anything on it all week. I was going to comment. And then today we said, geez, North could have used Cal Wilkie when they were 38 points up. Did you comment it? I think Morgs did through the 100K Perfect. Account. 100%. You have to. That's nah. so, It's the perfect time to post it and just tag you and say, shut up. I fucking I made that take when they were 0 and 7 and they had conceded 200 more points than anyone in the league. Like they're begging for a backman and then it's got posted this week. After Aldi, he's had an amazing season. Credit to him. All right, yeah. next game, Das. Oh boy. 110 MCG Sunday. The Hawks dog walk the Carlton Blues, who kicked one goal after quarter time. Sorry, two goals after quarter time. This was ugly. Like, and I am going to go in, but I want to hear you with that. I want to hear you talk about it first. Well, there's something to do with if there's a, a milestone game or anything, just fade the Blues. Cripps is 200th the other week. The boys just didn't want to get up for it. You had all the club legend there in the old retro jersey. Cuda was out the front end. Chris Drew, everyone's pumped. 84 thou in the house, share with the MCG. 110. I messaged our group chat. I just said, I've never been to a grand final, but I can imagine this is what it feels like. Like 110 Early. MCG. Pretty good start to the game. The Hawks were definitely better in the first quarter, but it was still even or they were only up by two points. And they dog walked us in the second quarter. Clearance wise, so like not even looking at the stats, I thought John Newcomb, no one could tackle him. I just thought that he was like ripping the, the game apart from the middle. Lloyd Meek took the absolute piss in the middle. And I just thought all of their all of their gun running plays, like that hawk ball that they keep talking about, it was just so evident today. You were saying that we look like one, probably one of the slowest teams in the AFL. I said, if Jacob Wiedering is our fastest defender, there is a problem. Now, I did voice memo this in one of our group chats, Jev, in the first quarter. I'm just going to get it and play it because I – this is – so this is what I said. Boys, the matchup, Massimo D'Ambrosio on Ollie Hollands. This is going to be bad. Massimo D'Ambrosio, Jev, on Ollie Hollands. That <laughs> is the matchup. Massimo took him to the cleanest. So he's the slowest 60-kilo player I've ever seen in my life. Walsh has the biggest yips of his life. He, can, I said it about four or five weeks ago. I'm like, he's one of the worst inside 50 kicks in the AFL. When we versed the Suns that day, he overshot Charlie three times and kicked it straight down Mac Andrews' throat. Not that Mac needed any more help that game because he was absolutely dominating. If we look at – Jeb, if you look at a mouse, yeah, what, what do mouses love? Crumbs. Yes. Motlop is the reverse mouse. That is what he is, <laughs> Jeb. He cannot go fucking near a crumb. You've got two of the biggest forwards in the comp and you cannot get a crumb at the feet. It's just fucking unbelievable. Who else can I go through? Cribs, no, not that good. Oh, here we go. So Jordan Boyd, Jeb, not the sub. <laughs> Not the sub. So anyone goes on the AFL app right now, Jordan Boyd, you click on him. He played 60 minutes game time, 60 minutes and 26 seconds, Jeff. Have a guess how many touches he had. <laughs> Goose eggs. <laughs> Goose eggs. Zero clearances, zero hit outs, zero tackles, zero inside 50s, inside 50s, rebound 50s, free four, freeze against, two one percenters. That's four it. Four pressure acts. <laughs> Four pressure acts in 60 minutes of football, Jev. Zero S possessions. I know he was banged up. I, I think he yeah. might have broken his collarbone or something. That's, but that's right. Yeah, it's, it's it's tough. So Jack Martin, he's doing uh, Gary Rowan. So we're convinced that he's sleeping with the physio because he spends that much time there. That's what he does. He went out there his first game, second game back. Nah, I've got to go back to the physio. I've got to go check that out. But unfortunately, Jev, I'm, I can't defend the boys. I cannot. Saad went out late. Martin went out early. Fogarty went out, which was friendly fire. Uh, McGovern apparently went down with a sore hammy. I think he was just out with bad form. Kerno obviously went out. Um, 
No, all credits to the Hawks. I definitely thought the Hawks were going to be a good side. I thought in some world today that they might jump us. I did not expect this. Cole Shadir, we're expecting a big game from eventually, Jev. He looked fucking oh, fantastic looked so today. Gunston, he's been terrible with his set shots all year. I'm like, oh, watch him slice and dice ass. And is there anyone that has the a better role in football right now, Jev? If you're trying to prolong your career, what role would you want? You get paid for a full-time match, and you only play 15 minutes. The Stuart Luke Bruce, Bruce role is fucking unbelievable, isn't it? He comes Jack on, Gun- kicks a couple of goals, Luke Bruce, and just dominates. But one last thing before I hand you over the keys where you can just roast all the boys to within an inch of their lives. Fuck, where did this go? Where would this go? I have, and I just want to give – I just want to give a massive shout-out, Jev. <clears throat> You don't need to kick goals to be a good forward. I just want to say the Wiz today's field kicking was unbelievable. So he had 17 disposals, 10 score involvements, uh, four goal assists, direct goal assists, 400 meters gain, uh, six inside 50s and two clearances. I just thought a couple of smothers, a couple of really good spoils. Um, It's not all about kicking goals. I just thought he had a really good team game. I think maybe in the first couple of weeks where he, like when we went to go watch him, he'd spray him or just have a shot on goal. How many times was he looking in board? I'm not sure if you watched the whole game. I just thought the Wiz had a really good forwards game and he's looking like in a good team when the cream on top, like it's the sort of player that you want. So I thought his defensive work was really good. Um, even though his offensive work didn't, wasn't smashing the score, but before direct goal assist, love the whiz. And um, yeah, had to turn the, the Hawks jersey on. Some guys were coming up to me after the game. How good are the Hawks? We're in the eight. <laughs> I was just celebrating with them. Uh, but yeah, we were doggies, Jeff. Absolute doggies. I said, how many weeks ago did I say you are the worst defense in the comp? It is. You're the worst team defense and the slowest football team I've ever seen. It was. How, sl- how slow did Hawthorne make you look? The second the game started, because I watched it home. Five weeks ago, Jim. Five Jordan weeks ago. Lewis and Nick, uh, Jack Rewalt were just like, the Hawks are just going a million miles an hour every time they got the ball. And they just, by the end, they made you look like the slowest team in history. Then I'm looking at your team. I'm like, where's the leg speed? Kemp, Weeder, and Cow and Newman. Not much leg speed there. McGovern, Sard, Sard's lost a step. He's not the same player he used to be. Mm. Ollie Hollands is as slow as a wet week. Then your midfield. Who's the outlier in this midfield when it's Kennedy, Hewitt, Walsh, Cripps, you know, you bring in Chera. They just feel like five of the same sort of midfielders. There's no like elite game break. You don't have your Isaac Rankin run through there or your your Chad Warner running through there, your real game breaking speed, your Ed Richards and stuff. I just swear you play Elijah Hollins, Jack Martin's injured again, Lockie Fogarty. You play 18 players of the same pace who just aren't that quick. It is one of the slowest football teams I've ever seen. Zach Williams, Matt Owies, like there's just no leg speed at all. We feel like... So, uh, Andrew Russell got, uh, or he retired. No, I, I, if there's Carlton fans listening, I'd love to know your, your thoughts on this. This is my thoughts. So, he retired this year. We've had like the most amount of soft tissue hamstring injuries, I think, of any club in the last five years. Like, it's fucking unbelievable. I reckon he got given the ass. 100%. And so, there was a thing earlier in the year where I think it was like after round four. The, they made Carlton do like another mini preseason. Like yep. he was flogging him and we yep. couldn't run out games. And we're like, what are we doing? We looked since our last month, Jeff, out on our legs. As you said, you said we look, were the slowest team in the comp after round 18. So we versed the dogs where we look slow. We only just beat North when we were there that we shouldn't yep. have. We got overran by Port Adelaide. Last yep. week we got rat overran by Collingwood. And then today we got absolutely run off our feet. So what, what I don't get, like – yeah, you were injured today. So you were, you were cooked by halftime but on the bench. But you were out on your feet at the end of the second quarter. I like agree. the boys looked exhausted. And it's like usually when you lose on the bench, it doesn't show up to the fourth quarter. Yep. You guys were on your haunches in the second quarter. And it's like so you're slow, you're unfit. It's like what's going on? Yeah, what I, has I've, Andrew Russell done? I've I've got no idea. And I'd just love to know. And it's just like you listen to the press conference, Voss, he's like, nah, look, I've still got utmost faith that we're still making the eight. Where? Like, yeah. 
West Coast at home isn't it easy? Like they'll fucking they'll they'll know that we're bleeding. Like they oh. smell blood in the water. They're gonna be having a crack. And then St Kilda at Marvel last game of the year. That's an absolute Grinch game for them. They said they want to be the Grinch this year. That is one where fucking Tim Embry kicks fucking five goals on us. So you're gonna go without Sard, did his hammy. Without Charlie Kerno, he's he's a hundred percent done for the year. That didn't look good. I hope he hasn't snapped his Achilles, but he was walking after the game, so it might just be like foot. Fogarty won't go. Jack Martin won't go. Mitch McGovern won't go. Waterman and Oscar Allen are going to be licking their lips. Oh, imagine if Barras is fit and McGovern. Barras stands on Mackay, and Waterman finds himself loose. There, you know. West Coast have won two games in a row. Carlton haven't won two games in a row since June 30, the month of it's June. It's fucked. It's nearly September. No, nah, we're, we're cooked. Like, it's it's put a fork in us. If we happen to, in some crazy world, scrape into the eight, we're getting done first round. Like, this isn't a team that – so, essentially, what's it? Five – you'd have to win – so, six more games to win the flag, yeah? Yeah. You think the Blues are going to win six games in a row? What have you – you've lost five of your last six, haven't you? Do you think Blues are going to win six <laughs> games in a row? Not a chance in hell. In what, in what world? And that's what we're going to look at once we get through the last game. Like, what team could win six in a row from now? Because essentially, oh. that's, essentially that's what you have to do, five or six. It's so fucked. To win the yeah, flag. You guys are absolutely done. Yeah. Absolutely done. Something has to change. I saw you're interested in Nick Haynes from GWS, who used to be an absolute competition A grader. Remember when he was a star? Remember when he did his hammy against Adelaide on that <laughs> round one? It was so hot and he went back and kicked the goal. Yeah. I, I like him for you, but I don't know if he's done. Like he's well into his 30s. But just that extra defender who actually defends and plays on a man, it's not a bad pickup. Um Oh fuck! That game was ugly. You got to give the crow, uh, the hawks, some love. Oh, they hundred percent. Like they, they've been the most, yeah, informed team since the buy or whatever. What can you? Who can you remember? A team have a turnaround. I know the Pies went from fourth last to a prelim. They but... were, they finished sixteenth that year, I think. Yeah. So what were the Hawks last year? Eighteenth. They had pick five after. I reckon they were fourth bottom. 14th. What turnaround seems more impressive? Well, Collingwood played in a prelim, so Hawks have to make a prelim. But it feels like the Pies, I think it's just because the Pies two years before that were actually playing finals. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was almost like a little bit of like a yo-yo, like, like, like that. it was like a mulligan year. Why the Hawks almost seem like they've come from further back. It's like I don't think anyone expected this. So I'm really interested to see what do you reckon they do with – Mitch Lewis, like, do they trade him out because he's injured? Like, they look better without him, but remember, Gunston and Bruce are going to retire. Yeah, no, they need Mitch Lewis is taking Gunston's spot, basically. But yeah, they just have Chol sitting at the top of the square, and then those little forwards just get to work when that ball hits the ground. Geez, they look dangerous. They run so hard. Let's do some odds, Dars. So, oh, yeah, you've got them. I got the odds here. So yes, getting – we both backed it. I just – when I was screenshotting, I'm like, geez, that stands out. $4.90 for Nick Watson to get 15 touches. I'm like, I have to have a sprinkle on that. I didn't have much. I only had 10 on it. But still, I turned 10 into 49 of just watching Nick Watson just work up and back, up and back. He was named on ball. You just – we always say it does. Sam, what does Sam Mitchell want out of all these small forwards? You want to get up the ground further enough that you can get 15 to 20 touches and close enough to goal that hopefully you can kick two or three. So the comparison that I really want to start looking at is when Brent Harvey, when he started playing, was that unbelievable, just small forward. He played in like the Vic game before his 18th. He didn't have an 18th birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So he so he could have beers at night and he kick five. So and then became one of the best like clearance team, uh, one of the best clearance like all round players. With how fast he is, could you see him not morphing into like a specialist at clearance? Because like if you're in the middle and you've got space, you can get a block on. Yes, he might be a liability the other way, but if Lloyd Meek can get taps out the front or back, how quick does he read it from stoppage? Because that, that's what that's what his craft is, like yeah. reading the ball, timing the flight. He had a couple of really good ones against the Pies and a couple of clearances today. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's something that they try and look at, start him in the middle and then literally just push it straight down to the forward line and maybe swaps with a 
I know for Warple or a day starting at half four and they just quickly swap in the center. But yeah, yeah, interesting to think about. Like they did that without Will Day today. They subbed him out at like half time tactically because yeah. he was just a bit sore, obviously. Like, well, this game's over. Anyway, uh, disposals, what do you got for me? Uh, so we got Kennedy had 33. Matt Kennedy for 33. He, he tried his best. <laughs> 10 to 1 for 30 would have been nice. Yeah, because he hasn't been playing. Uh, Massimo D'Ambrosio, can we lock him up for all Australian now? Yeah, he, I feel like he's got the other wing to Errol Gordon, doesn't he? Or close he? to. Yeah, has he to. He uh, was 10 to 1 for 30 as well. Sisley for 30. So you know this is when they're doing well. Sisley was having pot shots from the 50. Yeah, he was 775 for 30. He was in trouble early. Like first quarter when you guys were actually playing well, he looked out, out, out of size against Mackay, but then they just didn't get enough ball. So it's like, it's fine. He just dominated the game after that. How good? Oh, I, they needs to be like a 25-man squad for the All-Australian. So Dylan Moore just like is a utility. Oh, what 25, a player. 25 touches? Uh, 25 for Dylan Moore was $3.60. What a fucking player. Uh, Blake Akers had 25, 25. $2.50. Nick Newman would have been there about. Nah, nothing. So nothing. here, fuck, they filled the statue. Oh, 245. Warple, Nash, McDonald, and Impey. Warple? Warple, Nash. Wait, where's Warple? So he was $2.45 for 25. Nash was $3.90. Impey was $5.90. Fuck, they just were good today, weren't they? And let's just go some. Go- look at all, like they had only had how many players? They had Meek, Will Day, who got subbed off, Cole Shadir, Chol, Frost, and Bruce. They're all the only players under 15 touches. So Meek's your Ruckman, Cole Shadir's your key forward, Chol's your key forward, Frost is your fullback, and Bruce got subbed on. Every other player got 15 touches. Jack Gunston for 15. I remember looking, I don't reckon I screenshot this because I'm like, he's not getting 15. I just didn't bother. Nah, $3.80 for 15. Gunston, Watson, $4.90. They were just so good today. Yeah, I got on Watson as well. Um, Cole Shadir for three. Cole Shadir for three. Our man. Uh, where is he? Where is he? Seven dollars fifty. Geez, that's nice. Well done. Uh, Gunston for three. Weddle for three was fuck. Yeah, kick on it. Gunston for three was four dollars ten. I don't know if we'll get Weddle. Hey, no, I don't reckon we'll him now. No, nah, one because he kicked no against Weddle. the Giants. That's fucked. Guinea two, Bruce two, and that's about it. Guinea two. Guinea was two bucks fifty. I I had. Guinea 2, Watson 2, Guinea 15, Watson 15. It was just Nick Watson goals, and he had a couple of chances. And there was a couple of times they could have kicked it to him. That multi was playing 40 to 1 for that for those four legs, and it just was fucking Watson 2. Do you want to hear my $10 multi? Yep. So Saad 15 had 20. Newman 20 had 27. John Newcomb for 20 had 23. Walsh 25 had 24. Ooh. Cripps 25. Guinea goal, Chol goal. And then Harry Mackay and Charlie for two each. They only kick one. One each. So you think Harry usually kicks two, Charlie kicks two, and Walsh gets 25. They're only losing legs. Fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Fuck. Oh, the Blues are in so much trouble. I, they, can they go to West Coast and win next week? West Coast will be so common. Jeez, I hope Harley plays. Harvey plays. Yeah, so do I. Fuck, he's a funny kid. Oh, All right, kid. next game. So I was thinking, we do it like – uh, first things first, Jeff. They they don't usually talk about the other games that much. <laughs> so if no, if two teams aren't playing finals, honestly, in the comments, let us know if you want us to touch on more St Kilda and Richmond. You're not playing finals, Jeff. Marshall kicks three. He's a fucking gun. Yeah, he is. Is he the All Australian ruckman? Yeah, I have no idea who the fucking All Australian ruckman is. Well, he was a four. So he got drafted. Oh, I don't think he got drafted as a four, but he definitely played most of his footy forward. Yep. Could He's just a good tr- footballer. Memory three, Dan Butler two, Sharman two, good leg in the 100K, Caminiti, Dow, Higgins, Owens, Wilson. They've just kicked – they've kicked 15 goals, nine. They're going to be good next year, the Saints. I don't know if they've got the talent to be like top six good, but they've learned a lot this year, I reckon, and they put a lot of – they put some good players out in the field. They've started to kick goals this second half of the year, like – that, you know, they've started to turn touching the ball into kicking goals. If they can get a couple of A graders in, I know they're interested in LDU. I don't reckon he'll go, but they're they're actually not too bad. They're well coached. Everyone was calling for us to say they're obviously well coached, the Saints. They've been good the last, you know, six weeks, haven't they? 
Yeah, they have. Uh, just want some odds on this. What can you give us to Dan Riolo for 35? How much? You got 36. Wow. That's a lot. I'll go now. Dan Rioli for 35. I think for 25 in some multiples. $10.50. That's nice. What else? All Anyone else get touches? All the others would be like 25-ish. Yeah. What was Marshall playing for three goals? That's all I want to know. Marshall for three. I'll get that for you. Here we go. Goals. Uh, next one. Rowan Marshall was ten dollars fifty for three. Nice. That's about Tim, it. What about Tim Membry? What did he pay for three? He was three dollars seventy. And then who the hell is Jake Bauer? Bauer, 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 <laughs> Bauer bun. Who's James Trezzy? <laughs> Who are these Tigers? <laughs> they are in a world of pain. I hope they do get the fucking um. You could have bet on Jacob Bauer. I don't think Sportsbet knew who he was. If I no, didn't know, they don't. I hope they get six first rounders in the top twenty this year. They need so them. All right, next game, Jeff. Let's get into this. So this is before we left off. I just, I don't know, just had a hunch maybe that when Isaac Rankin's back, they might play right. The Dogs, the third loss at Adelaide Oval this, this year. year. They hate so Adelaide they, Oval. Yeah, so that's, that was the mail. They lost to Geelong. They lost to Port Adelaide very convincingly, and now they lost to Adelaide. So the thing with this game, we're just going to go with the ladder quickly before we touch on the game. So <clears throat> last week or the week before, everyone would say that the Dogs are premiership favorites or second to that. So it's them. Oh, I thought they were the best team in the comp. So they beat the Blues. They beat the Cats away. They beat Sydney in Sydney. They're just having good wins. Yep. Now, they're on 48 points, the same as the Blue. They've got North Melbourne next week, which yep. they can win. And then they've got the Giants in Canberra. If they lose if they lose that, and if Carlton happened to beat St. Kilda and West Coast, we leapfrog them. So, I, as I said, I think St. Kilda will probably get over the top of us the way that we're playing. But if we win those two, can you imagine two weeks ago – you saying that the dogs are going to miss the eight? Uh, that will be the greatest team of all time to miss the eight. If they Ever. Miss. They are so good. Well, everyone was Charlie talking about- is like fucked. We're right saying now. that they're, they're the best spine in the eight, the best forward line, the best midfield, the best back line. Yeah. They, they've gone and beat the Blues, the the Cats away, the Swans in Sydney. They're just flying. They're rolling. They're the best team in the comp, and they miss the eight. How much? Like as much a torturing as we've given to the Bombers. So they're on 46 points. If Mac Andrews didn't miss that goal after the siren, they're on 50 points. They're sitting seventh on the ladder with the Dogs, Hawks, Carlton, all below them, equal points with Freo, only four points off the Lions. They could have – they still had a top four chance, the Bombers. They still could be alive for top four if Mac Andrews – if they don't kick one goal nine or Mac Andrews doesn't kick that goal, they would be even more furious. Or Collingwood. Collingwood are on 44 points. They hold on to their win against the Swans. They're on 48. Even with Carlton, Hawthorne, Western Bulldogs right now, not as good percentage, but their season's alive as well. It's just I don't, unbelievable. I don't think people understand – like this is – this is like as close as it could be to like an NFL season, Jeb, with yeah. like the wild card round. So if anyone that doesn't follow the, if anyone doesn't follow the NFL, because the season's so short, they only play about seventeen games now. Um, every game means something, whether it's like a divisional game, like you have to win on the road because that means you've got a better like win loss ratio. It's just fucked at the moment. If you could. I always think like, oh, you do the ladder predicted. Yeah, that's pretty easy last couple of weeks. This is fucked. It's like so the fucked. AFL are absolutely licking their lips right now. Um, if they imagine if they happen, they couldn't do it. Bring in the wild card round. Imagine <laughs> if they just like pulled the trigger on. Like, Fuck they it, we're couldn't. doing it. Teams are too just- far planned ahead. So the crows just smashed the dogs from minute one. From minute one, they just came to play. They were hungry. They were quick. Ben Keys is he's like he deserves like that Dylan Moore spot in the All Australian. Like just put him in the squad of forty, so people recognise like just the role playing seasons he's had. He was just on fire. What's he kicked? He's kicked three goals, one nineteen touches. How many times has he done that this year? Heaps, like so many times. Dan Kearns kicked two. Good yeah. on him. I saw him celebrate just before, just fucking put the arms out. He could have given the handball to two blokes. He's like, fuck it, I'm, I'm taking a ping. <laughs> so Big Fog 
He's kicked five. So how much? How different is this? Fogg's kicked five goals one. Sam Darcy, son of Luke, has kicked one goal five. You can't be kicking one goal five. Luke will be spraying him when he gets home. Talk oh. about no dinner tonight. Oh, mate, you talk, mate, you talk about no dinner. I had to walk around the back so I didn't cop a flogging from dad. <laughs> After the Blues loss, you get an earful, don't you? Oh, mate, I had to walk around the back. I haven't seen him yet. I'm scared. I'm scared to walk outside. Shoal 34, Crouch 32, Laird 28. They they did what the dogs have been doing. They bullied the dogs midfield. Look at the numbers. Shoal, Crouch, Laird, Dawson. Like, they just got them. They just got them. This is the sort of stuff that gives Crows fans hope again for next year. As soon as Isaac Rankin plays, it's a different football team. So we'll, we'll um, on the train home, me and Morgs are going over like some takes of like what we did in the season previews, like where, where you got them wrong. I'm like, where they had the Hawks. I'm like, yeah, I was all right. I'm like, I had some shockers. Though. I said, I said, I think Freo will be a bottom four side. They've yep. been, they've been, no, I said, if, they're, if their line's nine and a half, I'm taking the under. Yeah. Bad luck. They've got, and he's just like, you said that Laird and Dawson, if they're rolling, will be a top two midfield in the comp. I said, oh, I thought that'd be all right this year. And then after today, I'm I'm really starting to warm to this take again, Jeff. I really think the start of next year, I think, well, Laird's had 28. Dawson, one goal, 127. They're, they're Don't go pretty. back to that well next year. No way. Man, the dogs just felt like certainty today. They'll be fuming at that loss. They cannot drop that. So the Giants, legit, as you're saying – Giants, dogs at Ballarat last round of the year. Remember this game last year? Toby Green kicked five second half goals. All Australian captain. Bond had like 30 and two in the first half. Then Tobes kicked five second halfers to win the game. This could legit be dogs need a win to make the eight. GWS need a win to lock up like top four probably. What are we all doing? So next week, what you want to go to Ballarat? Do you? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm on nights next week. That's fine. So nights we're going. We've got that, and then the week after. Fuck, we need to have a watch party. Like, just everyone get together. So the Friday night, Melbourne Collingwood. That will mean nothing. That's no. Dougie's gut. So Saturday, Geelong so, West Coast. So no. that will legit be Geelong need a win to finish second on the ladder. I reckon. Yeah, so from Saturday night onwards, so 4.35. So Hawks North, they just need to win both Hawks to be a chance. Yep. They'll, that, so, yeah, we'll watch that game for sure. And then they got that Lions, Lions Essendon. Lions Essendon. Essendon still could be alive for sure. Lions will probably want to lock up top four. And then Swans Adelaide. Swans so, Adelaide will need to – I reckon we'll have to win to secure first. Like it could – Yep. And then that's Sunday. Sunday, 12.30. we got to go to the pub or something. So Dogs Giants, Carlton St. Kilda, Fremantle, Port Adelaide. All of them are awesome. Frio, Port Adelaide might be who plays who in a home final. Legit. Or one might finish fourth, the other might finish fifth, the winner or loser of that game. No, yes. actually, Frio will have to win that. They'll lose to the Giants this week at NG Stadium. They'll have to win that to stay in the eight. <laughs> He's going to be so good in two weeks' time. It's going to be like – I wish it was like the Premier League and they all just played at the same time. Every game. You know the last day of the Premier League, they all just is play it, at the same time. Is that what they do? Yeah, every single game kicks off at the exact same time. That's great. So, and so you just get live scores on the TV. Fucking hell, that's awesome. Oh, my God. This is going to be fucking – this is like – It's big. going to be a two-hour pod. Yeah, but people can skim through whatever. Fuck yeah, it. Hey. Listening to Finn's cool. Listen to Harvey will be cool. Thanks for the roast, guys. That's hey. us. Blues of cheeks. I'm not convinced that we're going anywhere for the rest of the season. I'm going to make the best reel in a minute about the Blues. Oh, I can't wait. <laughs> but the thing is, we deserve it. <laughs> hey, Jeff, you, you just... We've, we won one of our last five games. We're probably third or like fifth. Comfortably. Fuck. So, no, three weeks ago, we were 89% chance to make finals. And now you're going to miss. We were like fucking... Ah, oh, fuck. Who knows? Your cheeks. We're cheeks. Absolute cheeks. Cheeks. All right. See you, bro. See you, bros. That's a long roast. But it was good. I reckon it's going to be a good one. Yeah, See you, mate. See you, mate.